established the Center for Mountain Studies and Climate Change to undertake research on mountain ecosystems. Indeed, the university prides itself as a green university. With a natural laboratory, Karatina University is an inspiration to the nation and continent on conservation and protection of natural resources. Just about 140 kilometers north of Kenya's capital, Nairobi, Karatina University has a rich history, having been established in a town which during the pre-colonial era was a barter trade center, which evolved to become the biggest agricultural market in Eastern and Central African region. Furthermore, with its proximity to the Mau Mau Trench, a strategic feature symbolizing the struggle for independence for Kenyans, Karatina University has established the Center for Mau Mau Studies and other liberation movements. As a chartered public university in Nyeri County and precisely located within Madira constituency, famously known as Madira Magidomo, which in Kikuyu connotes that Madira is the leader in education, Karatina University has grown to become a university of global excellence meeting the dynamic needs and development of society. Firmly established upon a foundation of equity, teamwork, meritocracy, academic freedom, coupled with accountability, excellence and property, Karatina University stands true to its motto. Inspiring leadership and innovation, always conserving, creating and disseminating knowledge through training, research, innovation and community outreach. With five academic schools, School of Agriculture and Biotechnology, School of Business, the School of Education and Social Sciences, School of Natural Resources and Environmental Studies, and School of Pure and Applied Sciences, Karatina University has taken the path towards a green university. Surrounded by large green carpets of tea plantations and proximity to Mount Kenya Forest, the School of Agriculture and Biotechnology and the School of Natural Resources and Environmental Studies have become flagship schools in turning Karatina University into a truly green university. At the same time, Karatina University is one of the few universities offering courses in aquaculture and fisheries through integration of its natural environment and economic enhancement through a fish farming training site. From the well-manicured lawns, the scenic view of the administration block, to the refreshing driveway to academic staff offices and hostels, the university screams green. The university is literally inundated with serene environment, covered by well-decorated indigenous trees, commemorative trees, planted by guests over the years. Moreover, the introduction of purple tea for beautification has also inspired the establishment of the Tea Institute of Karatina University, undertaking research on tea value addition. After a tour of the botanical garden, established for environmental education, both students and visitors are blissed out, enjoying the evening breeze. At the same time, the natural dam and the resting park provide a sustainable environment for innovation and transformation. Karatina University has established the same green environment across Nyeri County through environmental clubs in primary schools, accounting to up to 49 clubs so far. The journey of green in Kenya and Africa is on. Welcome to Karatina University, the Green University. At the foot of the snow-capped Mount Kenya stands a university, the only university located next to a mountain for touristic attraction, Karatina University. With its unique location, Karatina University has established the Center for Mountain Studies and Climate Change to undertake research on mountain ecosystems. Indeed, 
the university prides itself as a green university. With a natural laboratory, Karatina University is an inspiration to the nation and continent on conservation and protection of natural resources. Just about 140 kilometers north of Kenya's capital, Nairobi, Karatina University has a rich history. Having been established in a town which during the pre-colonial era was a barter trade center, which evolved to become the biggest agricultural market in Eastern and Central African region. Furthermore, with its proximity to the Mau Mau Trench, a strategic feature symbolizing the struggle for independence for Kenyans, Karatina University has established the Center for Mau Mau Studies and other liberation movements. As a chartered public university in Nyeri County and precisely located within Madira constituency, famously known as Madira Magidomo, which in Kikuyu connotes that Madira is the leader in education, Karatina University has grown to become a university of global excellence, meeting the dynamic needs and development of society. Firmly established upon a foundation of equity, teamwork, meritocracy, academic freedom, coupled with accountability, excellence and property, Karatina University stands true to its motto. Inspiring leadership and innovation, always conserving, creating and disseminating knowledge through training, research, innovation and community outreach. With five academic schools, School of Agriculture and Biotechnology, School of Business, the School of Education and Social Sciences, School of Natural Resources and Environmental Studies, and School of Pure and Applied Sciences, Karatina University has taken the path towards a green university. Surrounded by large green carpets of tea plantations and proximity to Mount Kenya Forest, the School of Agriculture and Biotechnology and the School of Natural Resources and Environmental Studies have become flagship schools in turning Karatina University into a truly green university. At the same time, Karatina University is one of the few universities offering courses in aquaculture and fisheries through integration of its natural environment and economic enhancement through a fish farming training site. From the well-manicured lawns, the scenic view of the administration block, to the refreshing driveway to academic staff offices and hostels, the university screams green. The university is literally inundated with serene environment, covered by well-decorated indigenous trees, commemorative trees, planted by guests over the years. Moreover, the introduction of purple tea for beautification has also inspired the establishment of the Tea Institute of Karatina University, undertaking research on tea value addition. After a tour of the botanical garden, established for environmental education, both students and visitors are blissed out, enjoying the evening breeze. At the same time, the natural dam and the resting park provide a sustainable environment for innovation and transformation. Karatina University has established the same green environment across Nyeri County through environmental clubs in primary schools accounting to up to 49 clubs so far. The journey of greening Kenya and Africa is on. Welcome to Karatina University, the Green University. Karatina University At the foot of the snow-capped Mount Kenya, 140 kilometers from the capital city, Nairobi, stands Karatina University with beautifully manicured lawns that provide ideal ambience for students, relaxation and group discussions, 
hence the green entrepreneur university that inspires innovation and leadership on offer is a wide range of unique programs spread across six schools school of agriculture and biotechnology school of business school of education and social sciences the school of natural resources and environmental studies school of pure and applied sciences school of nursing karatina university takes pride in modern facilities such as the skills lab a resource center that comprises of lecture theaters wet and dry laboratories cafeteria and office spaces additionally the university has ultra modern hostels well equipped health and transport units currently under construction is a 3000 park seating capacity ultra modern library with a children section private study carrels discussion areas conference room recreation section among other facilities the university is cognizant of the dire effects of covid-19 pandemic and has put in place appropriate structures and measures to prevent infections and spread of the virus as no more operations are undertaken institute our measures to ensure continuation of learning while on or off campus students continue to shine in sports and games on the field on tracks indoor or outdoors welcome to karatina university the green entrepreneur university inspiring innovation and leadership at the foot of the snow capped mount kenya 140 kilometers from the capital city nairobi stands karatina university with beautifully manicured lawns that provide ideal ambience for students relaxation and group discussions hence the green entrepreneur university that inspires innovation and leadership on offer is a wide range of unique programs spread across six schools school of agriculture and bio technology school of business school of education and social sciences the school of natural resources and environmental studies school of pure and applied sciences school of nursing karatina university takes pride in modern facilities such as the skills lab a resource center that comprises of lecture theaters wet and dry laboratories is impeding your joy isn't it so we we expect that to happen
University in Nyeri County, Kenya. It is located 140 kilometers north of Nairobi City and 15 kilometers north of Karatina Town off the Nyeri Nairobi Highway. The university is located at the foot of the snow-capped Mount Kenya, a national natural resource and important landmark in Kenya. The mountain is an inspiration to Karatina University in conservation and protection of natural resources, hence the focus on unique programs in natural resources and environmental conservation. Karatina University started off as a campus of Moi University in August 2007. In October 2010, the campus was elevated to Karatina University College, a constituent college of Moi University. On 1st March 2013 through the Karatina University Charter, it was elevated into a fully-fledged public university. The vision of the university is to be a university of global excellence, meeting the dynamic needs and development of the society. The mission of the university is to conserve, create and disseminate knowledge through training, research, innovation and community outreach. The core values include equity, teamwork, meritocracy, academic freedom, accountability, excellence and probity. The university motto is inspiring innovation and leadership. In its philosophy, Karatina University seeks to create networks in an environment that integrates disparate disciplines with a view to conserve, create and disseminate knowledge in order to promote development. This is passed on to the community through appropriate outreach programs. The university has over the last 10 years graduated a total of 11,048 students. ranging from postgraduate degrees, undergraduates, and diploma. In Karatina University, quality teaching and research activities are strongly encouraged. The quality curriculum offered is approved by the Commission for University Education. Karatina University hosts six schools, the School of Agriculture and Biotechnology, School of Business, School of Education and Social Sciences, School of Natural Resources and Environmental Studies, School of Pure and Applied Sciences, and the School of Nursing. Under these schools are various departments offering market-driven programs. Our students are encouraged to engage in sporting activities as a way of promoting good health and competition. <laughs> there is provision for entertainment and exploitation of talent among the students. <laughs>
Like those that have demonstrated here this morning, it shouldn't be that you come out of here with just your certificate. And I'm hoping that it's going to be a good certificate. But please get involved in other extracurricular activities. We have Christian Union, we have the choir, we have the Islamic um, group of students, we have SDA, we have the Catholic Students Association, and we have other associations here. Please get yourself involved so that you are not just pursuing um, academic knowledge, but you are also uh, establishing networks. The university prides itself as the green entrepreneurial university inspired by the fact that it has a natural laboratory given its proximity. I'm 
Jasusi unaenda wapi Nayo masomo ya biashara unaenda wapi Nayo masomo ya uguzi utaenda wapi Masomo ya kilimo utaenda wapi Kaibuchuo karatina utifunze bengi Nayo masomo ya sayansi utaenda wapi Kaibuchuo karatina utifunze bengi Nayo masomo ya elimu utaenda wapi Kaibuchuo karatina utifunze bengi Utifunze bengi Come, 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 come. 
Let's celebrate them. They are quite a number. Hapa ndo nambia mwenzako piga magopi vizuri. You know, you never know that there are many until you see them. Let's continue until they all come. Bado, 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 bado. Bado, 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 bado. Wawaja malizika. Okay. You know, you don't realize the impact you are having until you start seeing the fruits. And if you look at this group, they are just a representation of those who have passed through our hands. If you doubt the quality of Karatina University, you will stop doubting because when you look at those people, you see that work has been done. So we appreciate you, and this is a special group. This is part of what we are celebrating. Come on, let's celebrate them. Thank you, thank you very much. You may take your seats. Asante Sana. In between them, there's one person called Prof there. <laughs> you can lift your hand, Prof, they can see you. Some of you don't know where that came from. There is a time when somebody was teaching that class. In first year, I think it was first year, the first early times in those classes. And he, he, he was one of those people who would ask very difficult questions in class. And he answered also some very difficult. He would explain and do something. And the person there called him prof. And it stuck in because it was not a surprise that he came back with a first class honors. And he's completing his PhD soon. So we appreciate you. You know, some of these things, you will not hear them in a long time. That's why when you hear them, we celebrate. All right? So we want to thank you. Thank you so much, all our former students. We celebrate you. And those who have participated, you see, I think, Prof, uh, the VC, when you look at this, something good happens in your heart. You feel good about it. And we thank God. The second group I want to acknowledge are all our members of staff who are in administration. You don't realize how much work these people do until you come one day and realize if you're given part of what to do, you don't do it. So I want to appreciate all in administration. So I want to ask that they will stand and we'll celebrate them in these groups so that you, we will celebrate you all who are from grade one to five, to four, yes? We want to celebrate you because of the work you do. And we have to apologize sometimes that we do not take very seriously what you have done. And we have to apologize sometimes when we have taken it for granted. You know, when you come for Thanksgiving, you also ask for forgiveness. <laughs> all right? So we want to appreciate and we want to say you're doing a good job. So all grade one to four, please stand. We want to celebrate you. Please stand. Please stand. We want to appreciate you. Appreciate them properly. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. On behalf of the university, right from the council, management, all of us, we want to appreciate you for your work. If you don't think sometimes we appreciated it so much, please know that we appreciate. We value your work. Thank you once again. Asante. I want to ask that then those who are administration still, those who are in administration from grade 5 going up, let's stand. We also want to appreciate you. We also want to appreciate the trouble that you give us sometimes. That is, we do not know sometimes what to do with you because of what you have achieved. Let's appreciate them well. Better, better, better. Asante, Asante Sana. We want to appreciate the academic staff who are here. If you're a member of academic staff, please stand. We also want to appreciate you. Tafadhali simama watu wa kizungumingi. Let's appreciate them. Appreciate them better. In between their professors, 
They are senior lecturers, lecturers. We can, let's appreciate them well. Thank you very much. As they sit down, I want to ask the deans and directors to remain standing out of that group. Deans and directors. Okay. If it is not too much for you, do you want to come in front here? We want to appreciate you differently. Please come. Deans and directors, please come up there. Just as representation. Okay, it's also an opportunity to get picture. <laughs>
the academics would not do. We normally are told that the academics is a core business. But if you did have us, you would be a whole difference. This is the group that makes you perform. All right? Uh, Dr. Wagari understands what I am saying. They think they are the university, but we are the center of the university. Okay, can you introduce yourself? Good morning, everyone. My name is Lecho Moy from Transport Department. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Dr. Evelyn Anavare, Deputy University Librarian. Thank you. Good morning, all of you. Morage and our General Administration, Central Services, and Estates. If the academic division is the software, mm. then administration is the hardware. The hardware. <laughs> Come on. Is that looking smart? Yes, he's also looking smart. Yeah, he's my deputy. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Agnes Wajiro Jero, head of procurement, head of department procurement. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Adam Musambi, University Security Officer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's celebrate them. We appreciate. The last group that I want to appreciate from this end, if I'm allowed, uh, are members of management, minus the DVCs. If you allow me to, to have them come. The DVCs and the VC, they will be recognized elsewhere. The remaining members of management, please come. Unajua na fasi zineta zikipungua? Pale mbele amu unataka kuche huko. yourself. I was just telling somebody, maybe we should make this dress code stick. There are some people that I did not know if they would be like this. And I am not looking that side. Alright. The legal officer. Okay, let's appreciate her. Good morning. I think the registrar is setting us up so that it seems that management has ladies on me, but it's okay. I'm Dr. Grace Kakia, acting finance officer. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Wangari Gadudi, the registrar in charge of academic affairs the Registrar of Memos. Thank you. Asante Sana. We appreciate them. There are some that will only be acknowledged by the VC himself, part of the other management. I'm also part of the management. My name is Dr. Humphrey. Omondi, Registrar Planning and Administration. Since you clap for the others at that point, even me. Okay, we have guests who have joined us and have been given the uh, one distinct uh, privilege to identify them.
acknowledge them so that we may know them. When we go to the next part, we just go to the speeches, then we go to the food. I said food and a smile came. <laughs> it is okay. It is okay. I want to recognize Honorable Peter Wero. This is a special person to us. If you remember at one point, he was an MP for Madeira. <laughs> he is now the chairman, Kefis. And so we appreciate him. At one point, he brought us all the teachers in this area and we taught them when they were moving to ICT. Remember the time they were moving into that? He brought them courtesy of CDF and we trained them. So he's a special person to us. Thank you, sir. Asante. One person that I want to appreciate here, he used to be called DL. He is somebody who used to be called the registrar because he was the only registrar in this university. The founding registrar, Duncan Jovon Jorogen. We appreciate you, sir. And one thing I have noted, every time we invite him for a function, he finds time to come. And that's a special thing. We thank you. We have stakeholders and people who are sisters around. Many times when we have guests, we have benefited from a hotel within this region. And so I want to recognize Mr. Patrick Kuria Wamugu, who is the director of Omega Garden Hotel. Thank you very, very much. There's somebody who's from the government, you know, we used to be told Serikali is Serikali. Once we see people from the national government, national government administration, that is Serikali. When you go for some function, you are told, Iko watu wa Serikali hapa? Those are the people we are talking about. So I would want to appreciate Sir Dennis Mwangi Muchangi. The national government administration is the assistant county commissioner. Let's appreciate him more. We also have a senior chief, and these are people nowadays they are okay. Some time ago, a chief used to be the kitchen, the chicken snatcher. Siku kitambo, you know, when we grew up, we used to be told when the chief comes, you are careful. But nowadays they are okay. Senior chief Kamuri JM. We want to appreciate you. This man has been a friend of Karatina University for a very long time. Let's appreciate him well. We also have benefited from the services of Jami Hospital, and this is a hospital that has helped us many, many times, so I would want to appreciate Kim Mugi from Jami. A number of our buildings have come up courtesy of uh, engineers and, and, and people who have assisted us. A quantity surveyor from Jekua Tess, Stephen Morelli. Let's appreciate him. Another civil engineer from the same Jekua Tess, Katuhi PM, please stand. If you see how the new library is coming up, those are the people who are behind it. We also, for the sake of students who many times need spiritual help, we have partnered with a group called the FOCUS, which is a fellowship of Christian unions in the country. There is a small branch starting now in Karatina of associates. Those are students who have passed through Christian unions. When they go to work, they join a certain group and they become associates. We invited a few of them here. I would want to appreciate Alice Yamat, who is the secretary of this group. She's also a teacher at Karatina Girls. A member of this group also, Jackson Mutemi, who is out, it's part of Focus Karatina, and also a teacher at Iwari. So they're representing us from that side. Then there is Mugambi Isaiah, who is also coordinating us now as Focus Karatina. He is the driving force behind it. 
but he also works at TT, I'm told. It's called Tumo Tumo. Uh, Sante Sana. We appreciate Focus, and I know somebody else also who connects with Focus. I happen to be a regional council member of Focus, so those are part of my people. Kuna nafasi ya kupigia mtu mnafuma, kosi mnafigia pia hapa. There is uh, somebody also from Jake Wattes, he gone to somewhere, an architect, the people who drew that library. Mtu wa maya nichora, if you look at that library, the mind and the drawing came from this person, he gone to somewhere. <laughs> Finally, I also want to, on behalf of, of people who supply us, we picked up, we couldn't pick everybody else, but somebody who's representing the suppliers, from Erin Pets Enterprises, Peter Joho. So he represents this. Okay, those are the ones that I, at my level, I can acknowledge, so I would want to stop at that point. So if you clap for me now, I will turn it over to other people. We want to get to that point where we have remarks. We have a few people saying something about this university. I realized that when we introduced the HODs, I left out one, and I think one already came in front. I left HODs of academics, and you are very important people, especially when you struggle to get marks. <laughs> so we appreciate you, and when you enter them, okay, and, and get the deadlines done and all this. So I want all the HODs, academics, wherever you are, to stand. Please stand, we want to appreciate you. HODs, academics. We noticed that you took time to start by you are in the midst of struggling to get marks. Let's appreciate them well. As they are still standing, there's also a certain group that works behind the scenes. We have some secretariats, especially the ones who work, Senate Secretariat. We have other people who work behind the COD Secretariat. We also want to appreciate you. Uh, and uh, the Mar Marianne and the team, please stand, we also want to appreciate you. We know the stress you go through, through you are the registrar for memos, so we just want to appreciate what you go through. There they are, let's appreciate them. Thank you very, very much. Asante. Another special group that you will allow me, I think I must have escaped, we have staff who are not necessarily officially members of Karatina University. We have staff who are security from uh, outsourced. Then we also have staff on short contracts who are with us and we want to appreciate you. The work you're doing is immense. So I would also want you to stand and we appreciate you. Security staff from the outsourced, and they are looking beautiful, wherever they are. And then the contract staff, wherever you are, you are inside. Please stand, 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 we want to appreciate you. Stand, stand, we want to appreciate you. Come on, let's appreciate them well. Better, better, better. Okay. So I want to turn over, I've finished up with introducing the staff. There are some smart people who came in, you may have mistaken them to be other stakeholders, but they are the ones who hold the stick from another side. <laughs> Student leaders. Because you're looking so smart, and somebody has taught them that red is, you put on a red tie and a dark suit. Red tie and a dark suit is a symbol of power. For those of you who do not know, please stand out there and pick a picture. Those are our student leaders, let's appreciate them. Council, these are the people who have given us peace, and you can be sure that they are student leaders who are really good. Okay, and there's gender balance, not like management. <laughs> Let's appreciate them again. Okay. I want to turn over so that we may get to the other point. I realize we have sat for a, a few minutes. 
I'm normally told that if I, a man is of a certain age, they must keep standing for a while and we must stretch. As Sheila and the group told her, tell, tell us about nutrition and our body systems. So I want us to stand, to stretch a bit. We stand and stretch a bit. And this is not just for the ones who are recognized, for everybody. We stand and stretch a bit. Okay, put your right hand, open it up completely, and then do the same for the left hand, open it up completely. Then your legs apart a bit. Okay, then move those hands behind, behind. No, some of you, we have slow learners. Let me, let me. <laughs> You do this, stretch your hands straight. Both hands. Open them up. Then move them behind. Behind. Okay. Bring them in front until they touch. Okay. Now take them up. Okay. I know I will be calling Jami after this meeting. <laughs> Please have your seats. <laughs> According to a problem, we are doing very well. We are doing very well, and so I want to get to that point where we want to get some remarks from management and uh, some remarks from some invited guests and then we'll get to the council. We will also have some time to be brought to the presence of God because this is Thanksgiving. So I would want to ask, because my boss is here, and you know Tunanza and Nubayetu, if registrar of memos was here, she would have gone to their boss. So I'll start with my boss. So we want to get some remarks from Professor Linus Moduri Gitonga. He told us that Moduri and Gitonga have a symbolic meaning. It's a rich muse. <laughs> He's the one who told us that. Asante. Uh, thank you, Registrar, our chairman, we see. Colleagues, colleagues, good afternoon. Just want to correct it, uh, to put it better now that the registrar has brought it up. If you say Muduri Gitoga, in Swahili it comes out better, Muze Tajiri. And I'm still working uh, towards that, uh, you know. Uh, thank you uh, so much. Uh, gives me a lot of pleasure to study here. Uh, this afternoon in this 10 year celebration, I'll just be very brief. I went back in my mind when I got my letter of appointment. The interviews were carried out in Nairobi. So I had no clue this university college that I was coming to. So when I got my letter of appointment and I came to report, the roads became an issue. There at Mudeu, I didn't know whether to proceed or to turn left. Then when I turned left, I realized I was in the village. <laughs> and you know, having come from Jumokijara University, it's like, where am I going? But you know what they say about journey of a thousand steps? It begins in one step. <coughs> um, they used to say that don't despise small beginnings. If anything, even that Jomo Kenyatta and the other big universities, somebody did something from very small. So with determination, 
and focus and um kujipeana in english is what yes sacrifice we started growing this university but before i get there let me say i came and found at the university and the total staff of around 45 to 50. And that was a little bit scary because my first appointment as a director in the university, I had more staff in the center that I was reading than the total population of the university. And so you ask yourself, where am I going? <laughs> However, it has been quite a journey uh, to see this university grow to what it is today. Two months or so, because I reported mid-August 2011, about two months or so, I think cash flow started being an issue. Capitation came late one time on 6th or 5th, meaning we paid salaries on 6th. The following month it came on 9th and that was a scare for me. I was in the charge of salaries where I was. What do you do when you have staff and salaries get late one month? The following month it stretches even further. BBC may have looked like he's very tough, but I can tell you I was scared to the bone. I didn't know what to do. And I remember some of the things that you take sometimes when you are scared or when you are not so sure. But they end up being very good decisions. I remember then... Um, I can see the VC of Kemal University. Please, can somebody get him? I can see him coming in there. The Vice Chancellor of Kemal University. So I was saying that with that scare of delayed service, I remember we then finance uh, officer Lady Charago. What do we do? And Henceforth, we say that the salary for next, no, for this month, for the end of this month, it should be factored in as an expense for this month. The salary for this month, like now we are in May, should have been factored in as an expense for the month of May, meaning that at the end of the month, there will be salary, not delayed, whether there is capitation or not. And that is the literal beginning of one of the things that we are so proud of Karatina University, that we get our salaries on time. From what? From a scare. Scare of a young DDC uh, deputy principal then who didn't know what to do but with the determination. Another scare came where we are seated today. This was planted with tea. Where the resource center is, that was tea farm. Where Ruda is, that was tea farm. Now, to do this field, we had the bulldozer cut the top soil, do the laboring. Then we planted grass. But what happens when you remove the top soil? You end up with very poor soil, and therefore the grass refused to grow. <laughs> what do we do? So some of those little things that you don't know, get manure, bricks, and most well, you know that. But 
look at where we are. Isn't it beautiful? My point is this. When we are focused, when we have the, the determination, when we have the goodwill, and not afraid even to make mistakes, you are able to move on. One of the other things that I've treasured in this university, and I have said this over time, the harmony that we started with, nurtured, and at all levels, I mean at all, at all levels, it has helped us grow from the industry. Up to the point where we are, where we have so many of the things, policies, procedures, but right now we are cruising on a highway or you know gear five and you really feel good. Let us continue in the same. We have a university grow. We cannot rest and say we are there. There is always something to improve on. There is always something that we can improve on. And so um, I will finish at that particular point. Uh, I may not say much, but probably, I'm not sure whether we will have this kind of a gathering before August comes and my time to exit as DBC uh, planning and finance. So if we do not have such a function that time, it will be quite in the next two months or so. Thank you. And God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Let's appreciate him more. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tajiri. <laughs> the next is a DVC in charge of academics, the ones who call themselves the university. Even their buildings, I'm told that the main building in this place, main campus, is where they are. So I want to welcome you. Thank you very much, Registrar PLA. Yes, indeed, we are. I'm told that our students, when they come to the resource center, you ask them where you went. I'm going to the university. <laughs> so why is Chancellor University in E? See you will like work Thank you very much, Registrar PA, Chief Guest, Council Chair, Professor Francis Kishaga, Council Members present. Vice Chancellor of Karatina University, Professor Shari Mushiri, and I've seen also my boss because he's a Vice Chancellor at another university, Professor Kioni Karibusana, distinguished invited guests, university management, Senate members present, colleagues who are here, national government officials who are introduced, um, community leaders who are here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've cancelled some things in my speech because my colleague gave the history, so I don't need to repeat that. I wish to start by thanking the former councils. We have had two councils that gave me an opportunity to come to this university in the year 2011, as my colleague has said. He came in August and I came in September. And I've been here, I started as deputy uh, principal academic research and student affairs and have been here to date. Those are 11 and a half years. Until my name has changed, I need to stress that. I came here as Professor Penina Alo Obudo. Now I am Professor Penina Alo Nyawira. <laughs> Thank you very much. As my colleague has said, we have seen the university grow in the number of staff and students from very low numbers to where we are today, and also academic programs have grown. 
when the university was chartered in 2013, we had only programs that we came with from Moi University. Today, we are proud that we have developed quality, relevant, and market-driven programs at Karatina University. When I came to this university college, ladies and gentlemen, we had only one directorate, that was ICT. Today, we are talking of six directorates and one institute. You saw the directors come here. In addition, we have three centers that are complementing academic activities. As the head of academic division, I have been part of these developments from the beginning and I'm proud of what we have achieved. My division has made several achievements and many people have worked tirelessly for this to happen. And ladies and gentlemen, if I'm allowed chairman of council, I'll take five minutes and just mention some, because if I'm to list what we have done, I think I'll be here for many hours. Starting with the committee of deans, which I chair, we have been engaged in developing new curriculum, reviewing old ones, and even developing academic policies. And I want to appreciate all the members of the committee of deans, they were already introduced, together with the secretariat that is led by my able register of memos, Dr. Wangari Gadudi. They have done a great job. The deans of schools, heads of departments, and academic staff have done a commendable job in ensuring that teaching, examination, up to graduation is done in good time according to Senate schedule. And this has contributed a great deal to the success of the academic division and the university that we are talking about today. I am grateful to all of them. Together with a team of dedicated staff, we have organized eight conferences, of which one was just concluded last week on the 26th of May 2023. I appreciate all the committees that served in this past conference and even the previous ones. Conferences is what makes a university academic. The division has initiated donation of books, equipment, and other materials to the university, including equipment that we received last year or so from sitting rooms worth about 20 million shillings. Many of you participated in developing the proposal, and I want to recognize the person who led the team, Dr. Grace Kamodo. That was the lady who led the team. I guided, but she led the team. And we got equipment worth 20 million. I want to appreciate all these efforts. We have raised funds to hold workshops, seminars, trainings, and many other academic activities. And many of you have been part of this success. Thank you very much. The division has initiated collaborations and partnerships through the various sections, and I thank those who have participated in this. You have made this happen. Karatina University now has a lot of collaborations locally and internationally. Ladies and gentlemen, community outreach has been one of our hallmarks. And we have carried out a number of community outreach activities, including medical camps. We have done mitigation measures during COVID-19. Most of you saw us in the paper. We donated um, masks to the local people, and we have also carried out a number of environmental conservation activities. I thank all my colleagues who have been involved, and especially community leaders who have been working with us, led by Chief Mwangi, who was introduced here. We thank you for supporting our projects. The directorates, which operationally work with me, but they are answerable to the Vice Chancellor, they have come up with very unique activities. These have enhanced the image of the university, and I wish to appreciate them. Center coordinators, we can't forget you. You have been active in initiating unique programs, and I wish to thank them. The registrar forgot a few people. Center coordinators, are you here, Mr. Chairman? Allow me to recognize them. Center coordinators, please. We have three centers. Well, there's one. Thank you, Professor Marubi. And that one represents all of them because that's the coordinator of Maumau Center and other liberation movements. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> yes, I was wondering because I saw him. Dr. Kagema Nogu is the coordinator of Community Center. All the community activities I'm proud of, he is the brain behind. 
Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, time will not allow me to mention all the academic achievements. My special gratitude at this juncture, I've left the achievements now, I want to go to appreciate people. I want to appreciate my colleague, Muse Tajiri, <laughs> DVCPFNA, Professor Linus Mitonga, whom we have walked with this journey, he mentioned that at the beginning, and together we have come this far. Thank you very much for the support that you have accorded me. Members of management have given me invaluable support and I'm very appreciative to them all, including the registrars, the finance officer, legal officer, and planning officer. I appreciate it. My sincere gratitude goes to my boss. The outgoing Vice Chancellor, Professor Mushai Mushiri, for his immense support to all the activities my division has initiated. Many a times I've got to the VC and say, Mr. Vice Chancellor, I want to do this. Then you will ask me, are you sure DVC? Allow me, Vice Chancellor, to quote the Maumau Conference. When I went to his office, I told him, VC, we have never had a Maumau Conference in Kenya. We want to hold one. Say, said, DVC, are you sure about the On Maumau, of all the things, can't you do it on another theme? <laughs> but I told him, Mau Mau brought liberation to this nation. And academicians need to be heard. We need to talk about it. It's a discussion that we need to have. Eventually, I convinced him, and he allowed me, and we did the conference in 2013. If you want a copy, we are only selling it at 1,500. You can get a copy of the proceedings. <laughs> the VC has shown me and my division members and whoever in support, and I'm truly grateful to him. He has seen this university grow from a campus to what it is today, and we are grateful for all the efforts that has seen us come this far. Even as your time comes to an end, sir, you have laid a strong foundation. For those who are going to take over from you, they should build on what you have laid. And may God bless you abundantly. Can we give him a clap, please? Somebody wanted to clap, but they were holding. Thank you. To the current council members, led by Professor Francis Chaga. I'm so grateful, and we are humbled as members of the academic division. I would not have had any achievements to talk about if it were not for your support towards academic research and community outreach, which are the components of the university mandate. This is what makes us the university. Thank you very much, Professor, for your leadership and your continued support. Finally, I wish to thank everybody who in one way or the other made my work successful during the last 11 and a half years. From the people who work in my office to the administrators who provide various services to the students. Students are our major clients. <laughs> to the people who clean the classrooms, cleaning hostels, to those who facilitate the purchase of teaching materials, and even the ones who take care of the compound, and to those who ensure students are well fed. The security personnel who ensures our students are safe, the drivers who take long journeys to take our students for field trips and field courses. The list is long, ladies and gentlemen, and I may not mention all of them, but I'm grateful to you all. To the students represented by choir members today and the student leaders, I always refer to you as comrades because you are students today, but tomorrow we are going to be colleagues. Please, I want to appeal to you to maintain high level of integrity and discipline as you have done before. Our graduates out there are very valuable, so please do not break that pattern. Finally and finally, if in the course of doing my work, because my colleagues say we may not have any other opportunity to stand here and say Kwahiri. If in the course of doing my work as the DVC academic, I have wronged anybody, I want to seek for your forgiveness. Please forgive me. My time. Thank you very much. I'm seeking this forgiveness because my time comes to an end as the Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of academic, research, and student affairs 
in the next two months. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to conclude with this Bible quotes. I want to give you two verses in the Bible to think about. The first one is Psalms 133, verse number one. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. Let us live in unity, even as the Vice Chancellor leaves us, let's live in unity so that we take this universe to great heights. The last verse, Psalms 135, verse number one. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. Let us put our trust in our God, and He will see us through our plans for this university, so that this university can become internationally recognized. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all. May God bless you, and may God bless Karatina University. Asante Thank you very much, Professor Nyawera. You, you, did, did you hear her trying to sell proceedings? <laughs> you heard that. So the name has worked. We appreciate, let's appreciate her well. Before we come to the council, there are people whom I want to call just as representatives. We can't have everybody. It will take a bit long. So I want to ask just as representation so that we, we also feel like we are part of a bigger group. We have our local MP who went and became now a chairman, but also now the host of this place is a local MCA, Mr. Jackson Kabingo. We can't continue too much without being welcomed properly. So if you allow me to allow the MCA atukaribishe, aseme machache, and then he can welcome the former MP. There's a way in which he diniyao anajuana. He can welcome our former MP, then we can pick from there. Karibu sana sir. God is good, and all the time. I think I'm very happy to be a part of Karatina University. My name is Jackson Kafingo, area MCA, and I don't know how I can say it because I'm a very serious. You know, when I'm standing here in front of you, I can feel somehow shy because to be in a university. <laughs> It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Like in the common name of the other Unibucha, the Bucha, and you. If you're Kaliboni, Kaliboni, Iliangu Yamagutu, Kaliboni, Madera, Kaliboni, Neri, Kaliboni, Iria, Ya, Lady J. The open is our. Open is our. The Monavia Gogosuri. Everything is good here, and we are good people. We don't have a problem, and we are always coordinating with the, our, our, our staff here. So I'm very happy. In our present, we have a, a former, it's not a former, I always call him Mohesh uh, Nyua, Peter. He's a person who is well known in this area. Peter, can you come and then you just say hi to your people here? Thank you very much. Uh, the chairman of the council, the VC, and Professor Nawira, and all the others, including Tajiri, and all of us. God is good. And all the time, thank you very much. I first want to just appreciate what Karatina University has become to this community. Sometimes we wonder what if it was not there. 
and you cannot imagine Madeira without Karatina in past. I was here as a member of parliament and I was a proud, I wanted to associate myself with Karatina in past. And I remember that time we were talking about the digital, uh, that is the time we were bringing the laptops to the children, that was the vision then. And one of the things that I realized is that even the teachers that we had, we had, the teaching staff within the primary schools could barely handle a computer, live alone now teaching. I brought all of them here. All the primary school teachers, I brought them to Karachina University and they graduated with a certificate in IT. And I'm proudly, I proudly say so and uh, thank uh, Professor Mushiri that despite anything else, among the achievements that you've made, you've left a mark in this constituency and we are grateful. I want to appreciate the chairman. Chairman was my vice chancellor at the University of Nairobi. That was way back in 2002. That's when I graduated. I was we were within the same engineering faculty, and I'm proud to see him come back home. When I was an MP, I always involved him in all these academic stuff. But I'm happy that he had now come to give back the society. He's such a gem. He's so, so knowledgeable and good in terms of the vision of where this university can be. Lastly, I want to say that I'm very grateful that courtesy of uh, His Excellency the President and the Deputy President, I'm now serving as the Chairman of KEFIS. And what we do in KEFIS has got so much with what happens here in terms of support for agriculture. We are the ones who give the certificates for export, import of plant material. We also are the ones who certify the seeds to make sure that the farmers within the whole country don't get the bonoko seeds. And a few months ago, actually two months ago, I was in Yeri. And I'm so, so happy to have this opportunity that now I have Karatina and I can see Professor Keonu there. But the governor challenged us that within this central region, we are the ones who are highly ranked in terms of uh, the, the, these diseases of uh, diabetes and most, uh, and most of all, the cancer. And it was being attributed as need for research to establish what, whether whatever we are consuming as a people within this region of Central has got something to do with what is making our people ill. <coughs> the governor has been able to mobilize the entire of uh, the SERE, which is the Central Kenya Region uh, Economic Block, which is the old Central Kenya plus Embu Tharakanithi and Meru counties. And now all we need is our research and these academic institutions. And in our Mideast in Nyeri County, we have Kimathi, well represented here by Professor Kioni, and here we are stepping at Karatina University. As we give back to the community, I would wish to like, challenge us to take part in that research. And as from where we sit, I've been able to mobilize KEFIS, which is uh, the one that is with that, the Poisons Board, we have talked with the Chairman and other CEO. The Pest Control Board, uh, again, uh, being led by Dr. Githinji, who was the CEC of uh, Health within Nyeri. And the Cancer Center, 
being led, uh, the National uh, Council, being led by one Dr. Gitahi. And unfortunately, all those tears come from Nyeri. So if we could team up as institutions, as the counties, and now we get these academic institutions support that, probably professor and professors with a lot of humility. Maybe we could start scratching as to what is the root cause and what is uh, aiding our people. With those very few remarks, thank you very much. And I cannot say how grateful I am that even if I don't do anything else within my time at Kefis, if that happens, I will forever be grateful. And always, I want to tell us that always, whatever happens to you in your life, don't think that there is no plan. God always has a, has a plan. It is through God that I was made the MP for Madeira. With some of you who are my constituents, you participated, and it is still through God that I did not become a member of parliament in 2017, but who knew that probably we would one day be like John the Baptist, who was ushering in the Christ, that today we have the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya from Madeira, courtesy of having won the 2017 uh, elections because he would not have come home to Deputy President. He has to pass through. It was painful, but today I can tell you with a lot of honesty and with a lot of appreciating God's way of doing things that I'm not a bitter man, I actually thank God that it, was, it went that way, that now, through that loss, we have a deputy president of this republic. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Let's clap for him properly. Clap for John the Baptist properly. Asante, just for your information, this is being viewed all over the world, and people outside there are saying it is looking very nice. One of our directors, Joan, is out of the country and she is passing a message saying it looks very nice. Dr. Alari is in another part of the world and saying it's looking very nice, especially the MC. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We are doing well, and our time is also going well. So we want to quickly get to just a few things. I'm told that you cannot have a function like this without somebody was a kusema kitu. So we want to ask, uh, just on behalf of what was a Chief Mwangi, very briefly, Dasimama hapa kando yako was bodyguard. Utasumbuza kwa uchache sana. Then it would not be right for registrar the registrar to miss saying something. We may just want to hear something. So, Chief Tafadali. Okay. And then the registrar of Jitayarishe Kunena Machache Ofupi. Thank you, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Senior Chief Mwangi from their location. I wish first of all to welcome you all to this function in Karatina University and particularly to their location where I govern. <laughs> I am delighted to have you as our guests today as we thank God for the 10 years that Karatina University has been in operation, but Karatina University is not 10 years old. Because I remember we started with Professor Muchiri when it was a college, and we have come all the way 
from a college to a chartered university, and today we are celebrating the 10 years. I wish to thank Professor Muchiri sincerely for the way he has conducted the affairs of Karatna University, the far that it has come, and the economic value that Karatna University has added to the community here. We really appreciate what you people are doing, and thank you because, were it not because of you, I think we could not have students here. So Karatna University, long live, long live Karatna University. And because I have my senior here, I wish not to extend my talking because I have my SEC and when he's around, Paka Kiyodoka, Panyana, Panasema Namnayo. So it is my humble pleasure to welcome my SEC to come and address this gathering and at the same time to pass the message from the SEC Mabutu Division. Karibisan. All protocols observed. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dennis Mwangi Mushangi. I'm an assistant county commissioner from Madeira West Sub County. But I'm also delighted to be in Madeira East University, uh, Sub County, and in Karatina University. Uh, I would like to say that I'm very humbled from the brief history that I've had to see the milestones that have been seen since the university was given a charter. This is not something that anyone can take for granted. And it is all because of all of you. The coordination and the support that you have given Professor, the Vice Chancellor, I believe you have made his work easy in making this institution as great as it is today. So I wish to thank you uh, the Vice Chancellor and the whole fraternity at large. Uh, finally, I would want to wish uh, to extend or to wish the incoming VC and other staff members who will replace the outgoing staff members. Karatina University is an institution that we cannot afford to lose as Madeira, as a constituency. So I would like to encourage the incoming leadership to ensure a steady growth of the Karatina University as you move on. And may God bless Karatina University. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate that. Naserekani Mesongumza. We thank you. My predecessor, this is a man I took over from, by the way, a good muse. And uh, he will say very briefly, and then I would all want to turn over to the other part. And that other part is only the VC who will be able to handle. Karibu. Thank you very much, Mona uh, Registrar, the Chairman of Council, Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellors, all protocols observed. Hamja Munyote. Thank you very much. Um, when Dr. Mondi introduced me here, he said I was called DL, but it was not DL. Yeah. Yeah. DN. And let me say I'm a very proud uh, former registrar, because now instead of calling me former, they call me the founding registrar. I'm very proud. It is a title that will never be taken by anybody else. <laughs> and uh, Registrar, when you allowed the staff who have gone through this university to stand, I was enjoying seeing them having come to fruition to support this university. Um, let me say, uh, you also said, which I appreciate, uh, uh, Humphrey, that every time I'm invited, I have never failed. And I promise, even now, almost 10 years since I left here, when you invite me next, 
you should be sure I'll be here. Uh, Professor, the VC, Professor Mugotmo Mushiri, we have come a long way together. And by the way, he's a very good boss. Very tough. Very demanding. I remember like when we were working on the charter of this university in February 2013. And we worked on documents. Sorry, Prof, if I have to. Thank you. <laughs> and we worked on the documents up to 2 a.m. And uh, then the VC, he didn't go to bed. He looked at those documents. We were supposed to report at 6 o'clock in the morning. He looked at them. Six o'clock when we reported, he said, no, we have to revise them. You can imagine what a demand it was, having stayed here almost through the night. This is a man who has brought this university to this level. I helped him many years back at my university when he became head of department of fisheries, my university. We were working together. Then he became the dean of the School of Science. Then over he came here. History is, uh, is not a very nice subject because sometimes, yes, you can dig into some uh, aspects there. What happened in Red Valley was part of creating this university. It was part of it. It's unfortunate, but uh, from the events of uh, uh, that time, Karachina University was created. But then, I'm proud that so far, with the Professor Mushiri and his two very uh, important hardworking uh, deputies and all the staff have been able to bring the university this far. My home is not very far from here. Just here at Kiamariga, some eight kilometers from here. And I have said, and I want to repeat, I wish the university all the success. And I'll be coming every time I'm invited. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Asante Sana, we appreciate that. The founding registrar. Actually, there used to be one registrar. So there were not two. There was no academics. We were the only registrars. <laughs> so the university started from administration. Then little by little, the registrar of memos came in, but we were the founding. So we are the foundation, the rock on which the university was founded. But we are supporting the other people also, who come and teach and go away, but we remain as the foundation. Thank you very much. I want at this point, because it is not in my place to do so, there are some colleagues of the VC whom he will have the privilege to introduce himself and he will pick up from here. It is his time to give a speech and then in the speech I guess he will introduce his colleagues who were there. Um, after that, then the council will say something. Let's appreciate the visit. Thank you very much, uh, Registrar. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I had another little paper. Now I'm just pasting. It looks like I'm growing old. <laughs> Chairman of Council, Council um, colleagues, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this afternoon I, I really feel honored to be at this podium 
Um, very, very briefly, so that I sit down there and enjoy a meal. Uh, we have danced. Um, so don't worry, although I have a long speech, I, I will not take very long. Uh, secondly, like during graduation ceremonies, we prepare uh, what is called the chronicle, and a lot of what I would have wanted to say is in the chronicle, and every one of you will have the chronicle where a lot of what we have achieved together is registered. So before I say so much, I have two of, two of my colleagues that have, have come in. Uh, please, if you can rise. Thank you. Uh, right here is uh, Professor Keoni uh, from Dedan Kimathi University of Technology. Um, and uh, right there is a man from Tharaka Nidhi, uh, Tharaka University, uh, Professor Moriungi. Moriungi. On behalf of Vice Chancellors, and I suspect the others who are on the way, uh, may I ask Professor Keoni? who is a neighbor up here. Just say Jambo on behalf of the Vice Chancellors, please. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Professor. Um, Mushiri, it's really an honor and a pleasure for me to join you here as you celebrate the 10th anniversary. And also, I think indirectly you also uh, saying bye-bye to my colleague, Professor uh, Mushiri. We've been uh, together for many years. We started the two institutions, Deran Kemal Masse and Katrina, about the same time. Uh, so we've shared a lot along the way. You know, as you get up uh, the ranks in the Masse, there are very few people to talk to. So Professor Mushiri was, uh, has been one of that people in this region, I could call and say, how, how are the massive matters uh, uh, going on and how do we uh, move on uh, going forward. But uh, even as he exists, I would like to congratulate him for the work he has done. And what tells the story is all these people who are here. You are not here yourselves. You are not here when Karatina University started in uh, 2007. This is really the, 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 the greatest statement of what has been accomplished. We are leaving this generation of vice chancellors, but I think we are, we are proud of what we have accomplished together. And uh, one, probably one of the things I would like to leave behind is the spirit of partnership. Um, as in new universities, maybe because we have lots of difficulties together, we learn to collaborate. We learn to peer learn from one another. And uh, there was a project to actually uh, uh, that we could do together. We actually did that. And uh, in the last uh, five years, we implemented what we call the development of entrepreneurial universities of Kenya: um, Karatina University, Kimabi University, and uh, Shuka University. And that was meant uh, the, the whole goal was to transform the way we provide education and uh, transform the way teaching is done by our academic staff, and it was a very, very big success. Building all that, and this is really going forward, building all that, of course we have a big national science and technology park, but there is also now a national movement that has started on entrepreneurial education. And that movement is not just national, it's gone beyond, it's become an African movement uh, on uh, creating entrepreneurial education and, and promoting it. So there is a lot we have done, there is a lot that uh, we should continue doing together as universities as you build uh, this community and as you build Kenya. Thank you very much, Professor Mushai. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a special day for Karatina University as we mark the end of 10 years since the institution was awarded charter. 
by the third president of the Republic of Kenya, the Honorable Late uh, Mwai Kibaki CGH MP. As you've heard, the story of Karatina University dates back uh, to 2007 when Mo University established its Mount Kenya campus at Kagoshi in Karatina. Actually, I would say here Mount Kenya University picked this from, from us because when we launched Mo University Mount Kenya campus, scaling heights of education on 20th September 2007 in the center spread of the standard newspaper, um, we described the university in, and the name. Um, the name was quickly robbed of us and registered, and we were told to desist from using that name anymore because it's a registered uh, name. But the, the proprietor of Mount Kenya Campus always uh, teases me and says, well, you took your time, and uh, you had a really nice name and a motto, and so thank you very much. But he hasn't given me anything. <laughs> So the institution shortly after was upgraded to the uh, University College status. But by the way, after the name, we lost the name, we called this place um, Central Kenya Campus of Mo University. Uh, but um, certain people, uh, even from Taraka and other places, said they are also in Central. So we, we, we changed to Karatina University College. And after about two and a half years, uh, that all-important function at the Kenyatta International Convention Center on the 4th of March 2013, saw Karatina University born. We all gathered at KICC uh, to receive the charter. Soon after the first university council was appointed with some of the members who served when the institution was a university college, uh, being reappointed, uh, really work started. Because it's that council that then identified um, members of management through uh, advertising positions, and we all had applied, and we thank God, um, the three of us, together with colleagues, uh, DVCs, DVCs at that time, D deputy, as myself as a deputy, as a principal, and then as deputy principals. During the inauguration of that council in 2013, I singled out three things we intended to focus on. And I'm glad that the council adopted them and became part of uh, our, our uh, focus. These were the ability to deliver excellence in education, excellence in research, and our commitment to community outreach. We went ahead to capture these aspirations in both the vision and mission of the university and have made deliberate efforts to live by them. A lot has happened over the 10 year, 10 year period and it is indeed really difficult, a difficult task to narrate all achievements and happenings in a short speech in such a day. Before going into the few achievements, because most of them are recorded in the Chronicle, I could attempt to paint a picture of how the campus was like uh, at the time we started off. Mo University seconded seven members of staff to support me. Another four were absorbed from KTDA to maintain the grounds while one was seconded to the catering department. And I have to pause here and say that um, group of staff started off this institution with a lot of dedication. I I'm a bit shy to mention people here by name because in the process I'll leave some and it will appear like uh, I'll be biased. However, 
we have certain individuals that worked really hard. And I can assure you, some of you who came later kind of converted them to less hard-working staff. Um, and that's the truth, that's the truth. Um, uh, we, we have a number of people who are maintaining the cleanness of the compound, the entire, the entire campus. Two people, Mr. Washira and Mr. Kenywa. They, they would start at the gate and go all the way to the, the flats. Uh, by that time, grass has started to grow. At that time, we didn't have a lot of gyrantas, so maybe it was a little bit easier. But these are people who would start work at times at 7 a.m. And they would go even beyond 5. Um, and, and this is what I'm saying. Those who came later told them, is this your personal work? Why are you spending all this time doing this kind of And I want to acknowledge them for such a great work. I will recognize one other person. I, 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 will, I think I'll mention a few people. Irene Chalagat, who worked in my office as secretary. <laughs> Irene is one who was like deputy, at that time I was coordinator and then became director and then principal, but let's talk about when I was, I was coordinator and, and, and director. She worked almost like the deputy coordinator of the campus because I had to go to main campus many times to attend meetings of Senate, um, you, you know, Senate uh, Committee of Deans, and so on and so forth. And she basically would coordinate the 23 students who are here, coordinate the part-time lecturers, because we didn't have full-time lecturers here. She would coordinate them and even make sure that they have taught. And if they don't teach, I'll be, I'll be told and then I'll take action. <laughs> I'm taking a little time because some of these things cannot be put on paper as such. But I'm promising you I'm going to write a book. Uh, I'm asking council to give me some leave. And I'm going to be writing a book about this, these experiences in this place. Occasionally I'll call the intercom. Uh, so there is another young lady called um, uh, Kauria. Where is Kauria? Faith. Faith would now become like like the secretary. And that's where is Irene? She is coordinating work in the kitchen because students are about, about to come for lunch. Now you can see how the start of the university was uh, being completely uh, given to work as, as it were. Now, Mount Kenya campus had one vehicle, a Pujo 504, <laughs> known at that time KEH. It's now put on stones. And I have said, until I leave, and it's going to be four days from now, now you can sell it after I leave. <laughs> I say it should not be sold while I'm here. Because that is a vehicle that served this institution. It broke many times between here and, uh, and Moy University. Um, driven, actually allocated a vehicle without a driver. And so I asked somebody to uh, locate somebody to help me. So I would get some padiem and get somebody from the streets to drive here. I ended up with George Kamodo. George, are you here? There he is. <laughs> we have been here for over 16 years and George has not caused one minor accident. <laughs> But George was interesting. <laughs> George was interesting. When he knew that we are going, I say, prepare the vehicle, KH, okay, we are going to Moy. This word would go out. 
So by the time I come out of the office, I will find the vehicle full, except my seat. <laughs> you know? So anyway, I will take my seat, whichever remained, usually the front seat, and we will drive and we will go dropping people along the way. <laughs> the very last time that I told George, <laughs> this is not a matatu. <laughs> We left here, went down to the junction after Kanjori, just before Kanjori, we turned left. So we had three people at the back. One person was alighting, and he was going to pick two people. <laughs> so I said, George, are we going to get to the other end of this street? <laughs> so I, that, that particular one, I said, we can't overload. So we are not going to take those two. Let's drop these ones who are in the car and let's proceed. And at that time, the vice chancellor of Moi University or you know, the chairman would call me. Actually, it's me who would step out to talk with them so that George doesn't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> but with the time, I learned to kick him out and remain in the car. <laughs> so, George, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. By the way, at that time, this, was, this happens because at that time, Matatus used to drop off passengers at Kagoshi Shopping Center, and workers, the first workers of Karatina University would walk from Kagoshi up to this place. So members of the community who initially uh, survived on the, you know, the forest, forest chamber system had actually built Manyatas on the road because they were thrown out of the forest and they were living there. Um, and the animals would be, would be lying on the road and the road was really, really rough. In fact, when we first came to, to supervise or to inspect the, the institution, we asked the driver whether he really knew where he was going. Uh, but yes, that is, that is history. Um, it was really difficult to get to get here because the road was really bad. But I want to thank the late Lucy Kibaki because when she visited, she she said, "Ah, oh, want to manaishi mbaya kuniko watu kwa rosho." And when she went back, um, shortly after that, they were all collected and taken to Solio Ranch, where they were given land and, and housing. And I want to thank uh, the late Lucy Kibaki for that. That helped us to also get the road done. The campus initially admitted 23 diploma students, followed by teachers under the school-based program. By the way, I knew all the students, I knew all the staff. I'm sorry if I occasionally pass you and I, I don't acknowledge you because we have become so many, and we want to thank God for that. At the time, the university was, uh, was chartered there were 4,900 students. And over the last 10 years, the university has graduated slightly over 11,000 students who are making their contribution in various sectors of the economy. I think we ought to be very proud of that. <laughs> While we have not had formal ways of tracing the areas they work in, we have had very encouraging testimonials, and I'm proud of our product. You have heard me talk about these stories a few times. How I go into um, some restaurant or some office, uh, just at, yeah, over the weekend, no, Monday, Monday, Monday no, 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 over the weekend, I went to a restaurant and um, some would say, hello, professor, and he was, so I said, who are you? He said, no, I'm an alumni of Karatina University. And so I also opened my shirt, and I had my badge here, and we were very happy with each other. So they are all over the place and doing very well. In addition to those who left, we have, at the moment, 7,518 active students. The university has also increased the number of academic programs, like uh, DVC, um, ARSA has said, um, that are now on offer at undergraduate and postgraduate uh, levels. The one area I want to emphasize is the medical area. 
Um, in my handing over notes, because now, by now you know I'm handing over, and uh, my term is ending on, on Saturday 3rd, I would be emphasizing that we, we need to put a lot of effort in that area. Um, and hopefully, in a few years, we'll have a full-fledged uh, school of health sciences. Excellence in research is a defining feature of our institutional landscape and is integral to establishing our international reputation. Success in research requires investment and the university's full commitment to supporting the people who are at the front line. It is for this reason that the university established a dedicated directorate for coordination uh, for coordination purposes. We have also been encouraging and supporting academic staff to undertake research um, and used, used it as a measure when considering uh, promotions. The result of these researches have in turn been published in reputable journals, thereby putting the university on the global map. And again, talking about the Chronicle, every year we list uh, the publications that um, our academics uh, publish and you should be able to see how much uh, they are doing. In addition to some of the research such as in Purple Tea, um, we are now working towards commercialization and in this week KEPS is going to be visiting to, um, to inspect our processes of uh, producing the tea so that we can be given the go-ahead and the mark of quality so that we can commercialize it. The university started with buildings inherited from KTDA, as a lot, many of you know. Over the years, four buildings have been constructed, namely the multipurpose center, the new tuition blocks down there, the 920 bed capacity, uh, Runda, and by the way, these names are given by, by students and we adopt them. Uh, we also have constructed the 350 capacity, bed capacity, Spring Valley Hostel, and the ongoing university library. And you had um, the consultants being acknowledged. Uh, Samuel Kigondu, if you can please just, just rise. He's the man who has been designing now you can't be seen very well because there is a bright light behind you and even though I, even though I know you are brown, now we... <laughs> but it's okay, it's okay. So he is the one who has been designing our buildings and managing. So he's a construction uh, project manager together with his team from Jay Quartes and we appreciate it. In addition, some of the projects um, undertaken using internal resources include the, like you know, anatomy lab and other science laboratories. The university also purchased a plot in Karatina town for future establishment of a learning and business center. Other infrastructural activities include drilling of a uh, borehole uh, that has significantly reduced the water bills and uh, the continuing migration from electricity uh, lighting to solar uh, security lighting so, so as to contain electricity bills. Now, uh, that is a significant one. We, I have not seen anywhere else, water bills being more expensive than electricity. We were paying um, about 1.2 million a month for water when we were paying 900 and something thousand for electricity. Uh, we thought we needed to do something about that and uh, we dripped the bubble and um, what that did is that it increased the, 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 the bill for electricity um, because we had to pump the water. We then chose to do raw solar and our water bill came down to 54,000 shillings per month. Uh, 
Mawasco, who are depending on our check every month to pay the salaries, <laughs> uh, came and said, how come you are all here, you have not died, yeah. you, are, you are not drinking our water? Um, well, we, 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 we thought that what we did, and that they were not better. The university, over the years, has witnessed significant growth in its financial base. Government funding has grown from a mere, not, not mere really, 423 million in 2013 uh, to currently 750 million shillings. And I'm so glad. I'm glad if the budget that is being discussed is passed as it is, um, having uh, traversed between, you know, the, the Harambe Avenue, between Jogo House and Treasury, back and forth, we are likely to get a, a significant increase, perhaps of about additional 100 million shillings for capitation. So that the next administration, the next administration will not say uh, Moshiri and his team, because they are also leaving in two months' time, have gone with all the money. There is no money we are carrying. Um, so, it has taken efforts, persuasion. I think I'll, I should take a little bit of uh, time to make a comment on that one. It has taken, like I've said, walking between Jogo House across Harambe Avenue to the Treasury. Begging. And um, yeah, this country is a very interesting country. Uh, when I go in there at times, I'm told, uh, Professor, you, you talk very nicely. You talk very nicely, but you know, you just walk away. <laughs> you just walk away. And um, I go across Harambe Avenue to the Treasury. You're a very nice man. You know, some professors come here and you know they, they talk like professors. You are, you know. Akinu paya yako, wewe unatendea tu sasa unatuacha tu hapa. Tough, tough, tough. But it is negotiations, negotiations, negotiations. And then you show what you do with the money. I can guarantee you that like uh, the DVC PFA has indicated, we haven't failed to pay salaries. Um, from here, I'm going to si sign uh, this month's salary and we'll have your pay. So, and it is something we are proud of because if you don't really look after your human resource on a chair, uh, you'll be in trouble. Uh, I have had a few hakietu walking, and then when they get to outside the building where I sit, things calm down when we talk, uh, because we, 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 we talk with one another and we are okay. Now, we have also the buildings that I have indicated um, for development. We have received about, about 1.5 billion over time to, you know, to develop these uh, structures. I can tell you we have been very economical. And let's talk about this because it's only a few visitors that are here. Um, every time I have taken guests to our projects, they really can't believe how much we have spent. And they are solid buildings, I can tell you. This one here, the Runda Hostel, cost 357 million. I know that it should have taken more than that. This resource center took 624 million. Again, I'm told it should have taken more than that. The most ridiculous is our library. Right now, we have paid uh, two, three? Three twenty-four. Okay, we have paid 324. That is the chairman of 
the audit committee. And um, every time we go there with inspectors, auditors, they say, really? We thought it is 1.5 billion where it is. We are not going to spend that much money. And that's, of course, after some of us leave, that, that will be spent. It's been prudent management of financial resources. We can't go to beg and come back here at the table to share. It cannot be. And, uh, and I think uh, you, you know that um, that is not in my capacity to do. How do people actually do that? I, I don't know. But what we've done is to spend our resources prudently. We have paid all statutories, your pension money, which uh, we are going to be moving. I know that everything is set. That money is going to be moved here. We have a pension scheme for members of staff. Let me assure you, I, I didn't have to resist to bring money here. It is a pride for all of us to have our own pension scheme. And if we continue managing our resources like we have done, even our pensions will be secure. We have paid, um, you know, medicals. We have a, a very unique medical scheme, uh, Madam Chairman, and thank you for Council approving this. Where we are trying to refine it. It's not perfect, it, but we're trying to refine it. Please don't tell others. When Mutahi Kagwe said, uh, Honorable Mutahi Kagwe said, that um, insurance government would not pay for COVID, we still paid. Please don't tell them. <laughs> we actually had, I think, eight people, uh, and eight people who are in uh, hospitalized because of COVID. Yeah? Including myself. None of them died, and the university paid. So, we have a really good medical scheme, and the hospitals, Jami is here, they can actually say whether we pay them or not. We actually pay them on time, after the... So, it is prudent management of, uh, of resources. Several capacity building sessions have been held and are expected to bear fruits um, uh, going forward. The establishment of uh, subsequent... No, 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 I'm getting lost. So perhaps I should just speak. The development of this great institution has taken the efforts of more than just myself. And I want to emphasize this. I really want to emphasize this. As of 2013, the university had 366 members of staff. And I know I have acknowledged some by name. There are others. Professor Maruvia traveled from Eldoret and found me sat by the parking lot. Just, just sat. We, we, we didn't have a good network of telephone. So it was a good reason to come out of the office and uh, you know, bask the little sunshine and you pretend you are looking for network. Um, Professor Maruvie uh, spent time, Professor Kenyanjui, uh, Professor Madenge for agriculture, started off. Um, uh, Dr. Kagema was a high school teacher at Magutu. And I'm hearing memos, memos somewhere. He received a memo to explain whether he is a member of Magutu Teaching Fraternity, or he's a member of Moi University Mount Kenya Campus. He spent most of the time here. Um, where's Dr. Gitumu? Dr. Gitumu, are you there? Uh, yeah. He's another one who also spent a lot of time here. And I, I said I may make a mistake for not um, mentioning some people. At that time, there were 58 PhD holders but today we have 104 uh, PhD holders, and uh, I'm always very proud of this. I know this is this is not common for the for universities of our size. Um, 
And we started at a good point. We started at a good point. Because I know the, how it is difficult to grow a PhD. The university has put in place mechanisms to develop staff, particularly by granting paid study leave um, to tutorial fellows, who then come back and are recognized as such, having you know, having attained their PhD. The, the current staff population stands at 383. We have tried to be prudent also in the way we use our human resource. And this is why I'm so proud, council chair and council members, your employees, because council is, is our employee, have done very well. And, you know, uh, the, 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 the tragedy of being uh, the CEO is that you get both uh, the flack, but you also get the praise. But I'm taking this praise uh, on behalf of all the members of staff who have done wonderfully well. Now, council members, colleagues, and staff present, the book of Ecclesiastes which I quoted here during uh, graduation, says this, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. I have four days, okay, for my season as vice chancellor to come to an end. I have served for over 16 years, not as a vice chancellor, uh, I was growing, and it has really been a pleasure and an honor, great honor to serve. At this, at this point, I really want to acknowledge the Almighty God who has guided us, guided me. I was one of those reluctant, I was really reluctant to come here, because the description of this place did not sound like a good place to work in. Eldoret was a vibrant town, and uh, we had been there for 18 years. We had started settling, got a house by the grace of God, uh, and our kids were growing, doing well. So coming to this uh, backyard, uh, Mweshmiwa, uh, was quite a challenge, but yeah, here we are. So when the management of Moy University resolved to send me to Karatina uh, to establish the Mount Kenya campus, I did not know it would be such a long and exciting stay. And I can tell you it has been exciting. I was nevertheless energized by the opportunity to lead this amazing institution and to endeavor to put in place our collective vision of what a top class university can do for individuals and society. Of course, I really didn't know at that time whether my vision that I sold to uh, colleagues and council would be a good fit. But I decided to give it uh, my best. With a benefit in hindsight, I thank those who made the decision to send me here, for which I reluctantly accepted. I have tried to honor the trust and confidence bestowed upon me, and I will remain forever grateful. You know, when we came here in January 2007, and I came to represent my dean uh, to assess and see whether we can run some programs of more university, we walked around, we thought it was a nice place. Strange enough, somebody started calling me principal. And they were saying that because of my background of fisheries uh, after we saw the pond down there. See, this, this man has to come here and, and, and start, because um, Professor Ngoge and I uh, established a um, fish farm at uh, what was called Chepkwale campus. And so they thought that I should come and establish another fish farm here. So they called me principal, principal. I said, please. You are not their appointing authorities. Would you want to give me some peace? 
And I do want to acknowledge one person called Dr. Tirong Arab Tanui, the, 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 the university librarian there. He took his time to cancel me from here to Nairobi and he said, you are going to stay with me? And he was telling me how I should come. And looking back, I am thankful to God that uh, Tirong Arab Tanui convinced me to come and uh, start off. And, and the reason is this, that when, with us, it is really difficult. But anything you do, you know, I'll just say that we are 383. If you compare with the University of Nairobi, that's a very small number. But because we had no other people, I was actually the first employee here, um, it looks like we have done a lot. You construct something little, it's something big. If somebody is appointed today at the University of Nairobi as a vice chancellor, they would have to do more than the Nairobi University Towers to be acknowledged. But we want to thank God for all the things uh, that he has helped us to achieve. So as I exit, I'm proud of the achievements the university has made uh, that I have highlighted above and that you'll be reading in the Chronicle. Likewise, there are a few broad areas I would have wanted to, to see finalized, but this has not happened. This includes the completion of the university library. Uh, unfortunately, funds are not flowing as uh, they should, but we are very, getting very close to finishing uh, the library. Securing additional land for expansion of the university infrastructure and I, um, I will still look for, for Rigiji uh, and, and uh, other, even after here, I will go and beg the work we really had. We have 50 acres, and 50 acres is not enough. The DVC PFA talked about this place had tea. Um, and student leaders, the comrades, would come to my office and say, uh, principal and eventually vice chancellor, if we come back and we don't find a playing field. That time Joker was the, the, the dean of students, Professor Joker. We are going to show you that we, are, uh, we have students' power. <laughs> so they would go and come back and still find tea here. So one time I told them, I've given you authority. Why don't you remove it? You know, that, that would be a lot easier. Now. What I'm saying is this, we have had to remove tea from here and where we have put up the buildings, we need more land. And those of you that have political influence, Wanakabinga, uh, EU University Yen, uh, as it is for all of us. But for politics, and I know you can, please get some more land for this institution. Put every effort that you can uh, join the council of this institution to grow um, the land here. We uh, have also hoped that we can, we have a master plan, and you, you will see it, a small bit of it in the chronicle, the, the direction we hope to, to move with several buildings that we want to construct. And I hope the incoming administration, guided by the council, will be able to or that, that direction. The journey would not have been uh, successful without the support of key groups. I want to appreciate the various distinguished persons who have served the university as members of the inaugural council, uh, who are led by the late Professor Charles Odidio Kidi. That particular council laid a very strong foundation of which this institution stands. First of all, their integrity was impeccable. I, I was really, I mean, Professor Okidi interviewed me at Moore University in 1990 to be a lecturer. And, um, and then we, we went here after he had left Moore University. And he was a man of integrity and he he was firm in the way we were doing things. Uh, thus, we 
recruited staff, we wrote policies, the strategic plans, and um, this is why I say we laid a very strong foundation on which this institution stands. The emphasis on integrity, both in academics and, and financial management, Professor Kitty significantly stands out. He was chairman of council. Not once did he ask me to, you know, wanavisi wewe umetangaza tender. Unaonaje? No. And by the way, no council member told me that. And so we started off on a very good footing. And then at this point say, even the current council, it reflects, mirrors very well with, with that particular council. That I, uh, so the current university council, led by Professor Francis John Gishaga, the eminent academic and scholar of repute, has in the last two years redirected the governance of Karatina University in a trajectory of tremendous growth. I say redirected because we had a hiatus, yeah? And then uh, we now are facing up. Um, at that time, I lost a few more hair uh, during that hiatus. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't very nice. It is my confidence that Karatina University will continue to flourish and have tremendous impact to Kenya and the global society. I think I've, I've acknowledged a number of people that uh, started off this institution, um, but um, uh, perhaps one person I should, I should acknowledge at this time is um, our people, uh, my family, so you know I'm, I'm recognizing people not in every uh, clear um, order, but my family has been a pillar. When I have had a bit of difficulties here, spending up to 2 a.m., go back and I'm, I'm provided for, but especially my wife who has been a prayer warrior, because this institution has stood because of prayer warriors that I know of, and my wife has been one of, one of those. <laughs> the most influential leader and mentor for me is Moses of the Bible. His leadership qualities and legacy became significant to me since 1996 at uh, the Johannesburg Airport in, um, in South Africa, at, at the bookshop, while I was waiting to, to, connect, to, um, uh, to connect a flight to Sydney. When I first read the small book titled Moses of Management, 50 Leadership Lessons from the Greatest Manager of All Times, and I would like to encourage people who aspire to be managers to uh, grab a copy of this. I'm not speaking for the publisher, but I think it's a really good. But permit me to just list some of the great leadership qualities of Moses that are certainly relevant to us. And I'm about to finish, so yeah, uh, I can see lunch is almost ready. Here are some of the leadership qualities uh, with Moses of the Bible. Make your staff into believers. Stand behind your decisions. I know you are now having a marking scheme to see whether uh, this guy here who is reading these things to us actually measures up. But it's okay. But also check on yourself. So I'll start again. Make your staff into believers. Stand behind your decisions. Maintain honest weights and measures. Don't compromise with tyranny. Maybe also tyranny. <laughs> Defend justice, but not for reward. Defend justice, but not for reward. Balance 
zero tolerance with 100% compassion. Banish gossip. Mm. I have to pause here. <laughs> I have to pause here. Oh, I left my phone there. But this is one area I want to beg members of Karachina University community. A lot of us are pretty good. They, we, and I'm saying this sincerely, but we have, you know, a group that when you assess what they do is not much, but they spread gossip and you know, those kind of things and so on and so forth. And so we, 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 we need to learn from, from Moses. Banish gossip. Treat people fairly. Don't place a stumbling block before the blind. Yeah, we need to think about that ourselves as well. Remember small gratitudes. Uh, no, remember small gestures. Finally, be responsible for the hazards you create. For that leadership quality, I recognize that although there are many achievements that have, uh, that have, been, uh, have made me proud during my tenure at the helm of this institution, there are certainly matters I wish I had done better. As an organizational leader, one must embody humility and take ownership for the shortcomings of the organization, not just the successes. I'm also aware that in the course of performing my duties, I may have done certain things that were not entirely acceptable or appreciated by some of you and others outside of the Can I have something that works well? Thank you. So I'm aware that in the course of my performing my duties, I may have done some things that were not entirely accepted or appreciated by some of you and others outside of the uh, university in one way or another. I assure you, I really assure you, that such failure was not delib deliberate and as such offer my sincere apology for the letdown uh, caused to, to those who feel let down. Equally, I am reservedly forgive those of you who deliberately distorted information so as to paint my administration in bad light. I have had to emphasize my because um, I've had to uh, speak for myself a few times uh, and to say, well, maybe, but I don't think that is correct. In due course, I know these distortions will be cleared and perhaps forgotten and my name vindicated. I want to urge, there is a new administration coming. Moshiri may not have been, you know, most perfect, and I, and I acknowledge that. I doubt that any one of us is, is perfect as such. But I believe um, that we have done our best, all of us. And with a new administration that's coming, I'm hoping that the uh, cabal of a few individuals who never get satisfied about anything will slow down and allow the new administration to, you know, um, do some establishment to take off. Members of staff will recall that in this financial year, we have uh, interviewed persons for promotions. We have promoted close to 120 persons in this financial year, academic uh, and administrative. But you know what the interesting thing is that I received what uh, the originators call, it, call 
um, a love letter from one of the unions. They wrote to me and said, these promotions are unfair. We haven't even started. They are unfair and so on and so forth. But the most interesting thing, at the end, the very last sentence said, please don't complicate matters for the next administration. So basically what we needed to do is to stop promotions and so that we do not complicate things for uh, the next administration. I am unsure that individuals that are not, you know, uh, ready to make progress uh, should be guiding um, administration in the direct direction they should go. Every time we have a council, a new council, they are bombarded with write-ups, especially just before they come for a meeting. I don't know how they get the email addresses and telephone numbers of council members. And when they're in Nairobi, most, most council members come in Nairobi over the years, would think Karatina University is on fire because they are given pages and pages of how Karatina University is being mismanaged. But the amazing thing, they say these managers, or particularly this manager, is messing up this great institution. And now you, you, you ask yourself, how did it become great if it's been messed up? <laughs> um, so I'm begging you, because I'm no longer going to be um, available to be a punching bag, the administration that comes, please give them some respect, some space, so that they can build um, the institution going forward. I really want to acknowledge again the council, the current council, for the great environment they have provided for us and for growth. The entire Karatina University community, to you, my prayer is that the Almighty God prospers you as this great university prospers into the future for many generations to come. Thank you. I just want to introduce council members. Chairman, if you can let me do that for you. And then so that I invite you to come and speak. Um, Please, council members, if you can rise. Uh, you could have spoken, but the chairman is going to speak on your behalf. No, chairman, just sit, just sit, because you're good. Right in front is Dr. Uluodi, Dunstone Uluodi. He represents the PS, uh, the National Treasury. So when I talk about moving from uh, across Jogo House, uh, it's not ma mainly to see him, it's others that are asking to help. Behind him, you can see the uh, Dr. Behind him is Dr. Scholastica uh, Damboki. She's the representative of PS, the um, uh, Higher Education and Research. Thank you very much. She's a lawyer, PhD lawyer uh, in law. Uh, next to her is Mrs. Susan Getonga. She's a nutritionist, so Dr. occasionally you should uh, uh, borrow from her, her experience. Susan Getonga is our chair of the Academic uh, Research and Resource Development Committee. Uh, Asante Sana. Next to her is CPA uh, Pauline Luganje. And uh, Pauline Luganje uh, is the one who, you know, uh, challenges us about finances and so on. Asante Sana. Um, the gentleman, uh, it's almost red. Uh, he's wearing a powerful tie. <laughs> <laughs> he is engineer uh, David Opio. Engineer David Opio is the chairman of uh, the Finance Human Resource and Development Committee. Thank you very much. 
Next to him is Mr. Felix Owaga Okach. And Mr. Felix Owaga Okach is the chair of the audit committee. He has been the, the chairman of APSEA. He just handed over this week. APSEA is the professional uh, associations of East Africa, Santa Sana. And next to him is Mr. Edwin Moremi. And Mr. Edwin Moremi is a representative of the Inspector General of State Corporations. Thank you. I want to thank you very much. I want to invite uh, the chairman, Professor Francis Geshaga, uh, to come and uh, give his uh, remarks. That is the chairman. But even as it comes, because we have members of the community here, we must be, we, we can't mention everything, but we must be very, very grateful for the community to have hosted us here and to also have taken our request very, very seriously and our challenge. You know we don't build hostels anymore. We only house 1,000, 1,000? 1,200, so that out of the 7,500, only 1,200 are housed here. The rest of them are housed in the, in the, in the community. And thank you for, for this great job. Wanachem, Karibu. Asante sana, Vice Chancellor. Let me start by acknowledging uh, council members, university management and staff, other invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I know this is now afternoon, <laughs> because I had written this to be morning. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today to celebrate the 10th anniversary since the award of charter to Karatina University on, uh, in 2013. Though coming two months later, this is indeed a great occasion for us as a university, as it avails an opportunity to reflect on the journey that has uh, been. During the last 10 years, the university has made significant progress in terms of infrastructure and financial growth, increase and diversification of human uh, resource, as well as growth in the academic programs on offer and we are happy with the progress so far. Ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to thank all those who, with their hard work, talent and selfless commitment, contributed to the development of our beloved university. This success has been a joint effort involving not only council and the university management, but also teaching staff, administrative staff, some of whom have retired, a great number of students and graduates. If it was not for this uh, commitment, I have no doubt we would not have been able to create and develop one of the best public universities in our country, Kenya. Let us also gratefully remember all those upstanding members of council who are no longer with us and who checked 
and contributed to the foundation of Karachina University. I also thank the outgoing Vice-Chancellor for leading the management in a cordial working relationship with the Council and other stakeholders. I wish to confirm that he has been very supportive of our operations and remain transparent in disclosure of information required for informed decision are making by our council. I also note with pride that there has been a very uh, prudent utilization of resources such as that our statutory and other obligations are met in a timely manner. It is my hope that the coming administration will emulate this. Ladies and gentlemen, I also wish to express the satisfaction of Council with the manner staff have carried themselves in the discharge of their duties. We have had very minimal issues of misconduct and this is very commendable. While there have been instances of minor disagreements, these have been brought to the fore and addressed as appropriate. Rest assured that we will continue to handle all the complaints fairly and professionally, and all parties involved will be accorded due process. We have had cases in other institutions where processes, including award of degrees, cannot be verified due to integrity issues. I can say without fear of contradiction that the tradition here in Karatina University is different. Our staff have performed their duties with utmost dedication and held their office in very high regard. In recognition of this commitment, Council recently reviewed and promoted a number of staff. We will continue doing so anytime resources are available. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the University Council is conscious of the fact that running this institution requires resources. We are grateful to the government for having been a supportive in providing the capital required. While it may not have been adequate, we have managed to support our operations. Following introduction of the new funding model, it is hoped that the university will receive additional funds to put in place some of the infrastructure in the pipeline. One such program will, I mean, we long to put up is the Science and Innovation Park. The overall aim of the park is to promote development, documentation, protection, and commercialization of innovations in science and technology. It will provide quality space and ensure collaboration and linkages of innovators with the industry to encourage need-based innovations. The park 
has great potential to contribute to the national economic development, stimulating the formation of new high technology firms and eventually attract foreign investments in support of the startups. I therefore hope that the government will support the project. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot forget the role played by the community as well as the political leadership. The university and the community enjoy a symbiotic relationship and the success of one is success of the others. The university has done what it can in terms of hiring locals, organizing community outreach activities, as well as procuring goods and services from around the area. You are my witnesses that this society and the material in general has benefited immensely from the presence of this university. From the rise in property prices, rent income from staff and students, as well as a ready market for farm produce. The economy of Cartina Town in the last 10 years can be attributed to the presence of the university. How much more would it be if we got the kind of support that the universities enjoy from their host communities? Some of the support we are referring to include land for expansion, as well as encouraging U.S. children to join the University for Studies. We also plead with the political leadership to work closely with the University leadership in identifying areas of collaboration as well as joint lobbying for resources. We request you to be our ambassadors in the high corridors of power. We have proved faithful with the ritual that has been committed to us and we promise to continue doing so. The university leadership must further remain cognizant of the fact that their mandate extends beyond their own walls. We have a responsibility to the society to provide answers. It is incumbent on us to lead through ideas, actions, and programs in ways that deliberately seek to address the challenges in the community and to positively impact on the world around us. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with regard to the recruitment of the next administration, Council submitted the requirements to the Public Service <coughs> Commission in line with the Universities Act. We are awaiting feedback and we will act on the report once received. Ours is to ensure everyone involved uh, that Council will do its part as transparently as has been the case. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to wish Karatina University tremendous success in going into the future. I thank you very much. Thank you, sir.
Thank you, thank you very much, Chairman. Let's give Chairman a round of applause. Let's do it better. Okay, we just want to have a few minutes of uh, the Word of God. And I would want us to start to stretch a bit. I think we have sat for quite a bit. Ask your neighbor how they are feeling, Umeduaje. Mambo Vimpi. It will just take a few minutes. Okay? We have stretched that part. Okay? So we stretch part of our bodies now. Okay? Hold your waist like that. And then let's turn. Release your hapo. Let's turn the other side. Break a hapo. I love you on the rear roof. On the rear roof, let me take a next one. And then you go to Evo. Now flow in a car. Okay. Let's take our seats for a few minutes. I'm told that we cannot have the word before we, we can so can we stand and just ourselves into this? Of 
over Christian circles for a long time, somebody who worked in Shell in the corporate world, and also in leadership in different uh, positions in church. He is a good friend to many of us, mentored a lot of people, special friend to many, many of us. So I want to welcome our brother, Elder John Nganga. Let's appreciate him. <laughs> Carries a wealth of, 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 of knowledge and the word of God. Something else that you may not know, Mrs. Rebecca Nganga, now Dr. Croft, yes, was the one who taught me economics, the wife. And you can see her up to now, and we thank God. So I benefited also here, and I'm doing well. <laughs> Father God, we thank you that you are a God who speaks to your people. And in this time of giving thanks, we thank you that we can hear your word and appreciate you as our God and our foundation. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Even on an occasion like this, that's the right word. Yes. See, a thanksgiving service is a time to say thank you to God. Yes. And that's a very important thing to have at the back of our mind. Whenever somebody talks to me about, um, about thanksgiving, I always remember, and so I've repeated the story many times. Like you heard, I was one of the managers in Shell before they called me an old man. And by the way, I'm not old because Felix was my classmate. We just left the university the other day, 46 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Felix, I counted. Uh, because it was um, it's actually exactly June this year, it's 46 years since we did our final exams <laughs> out of the University of Nairobi. In our time, we are not so happy university because I was only one. And um, I was a manager with Cheryl for many years, but again, before they called me an old man. And I to remember helping a young, one of the young managers to resolve her spiritual issues. And she became a Christian and became somebody who was interested in letting others know about how God can sort out your management problems, your family problems, is that if you truly want to enjoy life on earth, you only do so when you know Jesus. Amen. A lot of people think in terms of getting to know God when you're just about to die, because they are the assumption, the only thing we read God is about eternity. How wrong you are. Because life on earth is livable only when you know Jesus. If you came to my room or that thing, University of Nairobi, I had written on all my wall, I think it was room, I was in room 221. I can remember even that long ago. You don't know what you are missing until you meet the Lord. It was a song, it was a popular song that time, so I took it to the song. You don't know what you are missing until you meet the Lord. So I thought, and that's why I'm, I'm starting, I thought it's a very, very important thing. So this lady started moving from people to people, he, she even went to the hospital. And she was trying to talk to some a private room, a bank manager, and he, he kind of rejected a woman talking to me. She said, I will send you a man who can talk to you. So she came to the office and told me, John, you must go to talk to somebody in a private room in the hospital. I promise you to go. So I don't know what that is, than to go. And I still remember knocking on the room number, or told in a private room, and I found the man alone. And I told him, I'm the one who had to come last weekend. So when I came to the, I came to the room, he said, Dad, before you talk to me about God, let me tell you something. I left the university, like I told you in our time, you didn't say which, there was only one. It turned out we were in the university at the same time, but we didn't get to know each other. Then he started working for the bank, and he explained to me that in the bank, everything, because they used to get loans, you finish one, you, you once you are paid to get another. And he said for him, he was very strategic. Whenever he took loans, a project went up. 
He took another role, another project. And so his friends started saying, Hey, we cut we cut the air walk on my door. Your hands turns everything to gold in English. So he started realizing, asking himself, how come some of the people who are with the university haven't made it? People might be very busy. And that his was impression. So he says, even the bank had given him a medical scheme without limit. That means if he was sick, they could send him abroad, the bank would pay. So even sickness did not bother him. Until one year before the time I'm talking about, talking, he got a little sick. Again, he was well looked after. But then he had gotten sick again. And the doctor decided to put him in hospital. And by the time I was talking to him, we had been in hospital for more than a month. Then he told me, in that more than a month, my projects and my businesses are going badly. Of course, one of the reasons is that he did everything alone. He didn't even trust his wife. So although she was available to help, she had no way of helping. So she could see one thing after another going wrong. And was wondering what to do. That's when he discovered that he was wrong to some people on a previous project. He took some of his friends to one of the projects. And they said, hey, hey, Boana, you are blessed. Hey, God has been good to you. He told them, I, I come from a Christian family. I do not play around with God. I have a high respect for God. I don't play around with Him. Just tell me, in this project, I got it up. I arranged the, the, I made the strategy. I have everything I did. Just tell me where God comes in and I'll thank Him. His friends were so annoying, they actually left him outside. Said, you know, I'm, I'm being honest. Don't thank God when He does not come in. And if you could help me to see where God comes in here, I'll thank Him. That's how they parted company with his friends. And he says, I was genuine. I like thanking God. Like if people were clear, I must see where he comes in. But now in the hospital, I don't know why people in the hospital like looking up. I don't know what the doctor tells them or whatever. But he was looking up. And he realized his projects were going offline. And he had to ask himself, why are things going wrong? And he realized it was because of his presence, absence. Then he asked himself, why am I absent? Because I'm sick. But I've always thought sickness is easy. The best doctors in Kenya will sort me out, because I'm able to go to the very best. And it just occurred to him then, I'm not healthy because I have a good medical skin, but because God heals me. As a non-Christian, it occurred to him, it's not, it's not the doctors who heal, doctors treat. Only God heals. So he told me, now I know where God comes in. Now you can talk to me. I've never forgotten that. Story. Unfortunately, a few months later he died. But it's very important, I've never forgotten that. That there are many people who have been successful in life. And they keep asking, where does God come in? You know, recently, I, at least since, since we left in Boston for six years ago, I've been speaking in the Christian University of the University. I've been to this campus, I've been to the town campus, I've been to campuses all over the country, which I've done from, 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 from that time. In fact, we left in June, by September, I was invited back to speak in the Christian Union, and I've been speaking, speaking ever since. This year, I've been to about 10 campuses. So I'm still, I'm still doing it. So I spent a lot of my time there. I still remember last month talking in medical school and telling them anybody who understands about academic performance in school knows that to go to medical school, you must be the cream, not just the cream, the top of the cream of Kenya. Am I right? So you are there, you feel very proud. And you don't even know where God comes until you realize Many people studied harder than you, but they still did not get a straight A. They got a minus and were not allowed into campus. And they had actually worked harder than, and some of them are, were, were your study mates. So you know the truth, that you did not put as much time as them. Why didn't you get an A? Of course we must commend you for working hard, but there's something called IQ. 
which was not manufactured by your parents, is a God gift. Am I right? So when you ask, where does God come in? <laughs> you know very well that many people are gifted, but not academically. Am I right? Because even people who never passed their KCPE, in our time it was called KPE, they still do well in life, even without academics. Am I right? Because God gives us different. But let's now come here in an academic institution. You are gifted academically, I agree. But you are hard, I agree. But you must remember, it's because God gave you the raw material to work on. Am I right? So you can see where God comes in. And it's and also I'm saying medical school. Even if you have the raw material, just imagine getting the, getting something, you think somebody that agrees with your stomach when we're doing the exam. They know they call it uh, a running stomach. Am I right? It's not the stomach that runs, it's you who runs your toilet. But they still call it a running stomach. You are doing a very serious exam and you keep running. Would you get a name? Would you get a name with a running stomach? No. And it's not because you are not clever. It's not because you didn't work hard, but because of the wrong timing or the running stomach. So the reason you are ending up with a straight A is not just because you work hard, but because the Lord stopped the running stomach in good time. Am I right? My message today is, today is a day of celebration, a day of thanksgiving. And the major reason for which we are thanking God is to see this university, after 10 years, being what it is today. And you want to spend a bit of time just emphasizing that Professor Moshiri had done a fantastic job, but he was the first to acknowledge when he gave a speech that he recognizes the power of prayer. Am I right? That there is something beyond human beings that was done for the university to be where it is now. I, I want to read for you Romans chapter 1, if you have your Bible, and I know now Bibles are available in the, on your phone. Let me give you time to look for Romans chapter 1. I'll start reading from verse 21. Let me start 21. For though they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. Verse 24, therefore God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served, create, and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with the lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty of their error. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind. And I can go on. I encourage you to read that. What the message of Romans? That you can predict for sure what will happen. The moment people stop being grateful to God, getting to know where God comes in, God gives them over and they end up where they never imagined. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how well you performed. We have seen people that in their career did well. Um, Felix and I are in our 70s, but when the chairman is here, and he was our teacher, now we have to, we are young people. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it needs to be understood that we have seen people who did very 
everywhere in the school, but their life is a total mess. As you remember, and I'm not giving a lot of details, one of my classmates at Alliance, when we were getting, in our time, you needed to get, we did eight subjects or nine subjects, but they only counted six. For him, when he did the eight subjects, he got one, distinction one, one and two is the current A. He got a distinction one in all the eight subjects. So when you asked him to give you the best six, he said, which one? <laughs> all of them are the same. So that's what he did. So the other day, I met some, some other lines people and I said, so and so, what happened to him? He said, I don't know, let's find out. Nobody could touch your brain. I said, what happened? And they said, you know, he started drinking, he went to Britain, did university, came back, started drinking. The rest is history, isn't it? You need to understand that if the moment, the Bible is telling us, the moment you don't acknowledge God in your life, your days are numbered. You start doing things that don't make sense. Just again to search on my age group. You find a man of the 70s being followed by a girl who is younger than his last born. <laughs> and then in case you have a task, see, we had a president in America who was brought down by a small girl. You remember? Was, he, was she in a windscreen? I can quote the name because the newspaper item, isn't it? Now you need to understand that the moment you lose godliness, you don't require an, an adult or a woman. You would just require a small woman who had just dropped out of campus. <laughs> and she will hold you by the nose and like a pig, you will follow her wherever she wants. Many people, there, like, two weeks, two weeks ago, I went to visit an old man who is 102, because he was born in Kikuyu, they say, Rikari Ashiriki. That, that means the people that were born when the shilling came to Kenya, 1922. So and he's still alive. So he must be 101. So I was talking to him, and he was telling me stories about the kind of things that have happened. My friend, let me tell you, he told me, you know his wife, of course, at 100, chances are one of you is likely to have left. So his wife left him. Told me, you know, I could not marry these small girls. Of course, the small girls are not the age of his children. They are the age of his grandchildren. So I can't marry them. When they come, they take over and control you away from your family. So I've chosen to remain alone and single. Now you need to understand, the moment the fear of God leaves you, sense leaves you. Don't go to me. That's what Romans has told us, isn't it? You cannot be both sensible and godless. The two don't walk together. They don't walk together. That's why you can see America is saying they are going to work on Uganda. Why? On something that doesn't make sense. How would you defend people, men who want to sleep with other men? And you want the whole country to decide that they are normal? Is that your career? No. And they are now making the people who are normal and natural. Even what the dogs can. I know, that's not a subject I want to go to. But <laughs> I'm not the one saying, it's here. That the moment they stop having gratitude to God, men forgot that they are men. And women forgot they are, and they started doing things that don't make sense. Let me give you another one. When you cease to know who God is, you will hear very educated people tell our girls, whatever a man can do, which is total nonsense. But it's repeated by professors. I mean, the word of God says in Genesis chapter 5, he is one who gave them different. Male and so what female can do, male cannot do. Many of us are men, but we have no ability to deliver a baby, even if we try it. And it doesn't matter how much you work at it, it will never happen. And women, don't listen to a lie. You can never impregnate another woman. Even if you marry another woman, you will be childless. Am I communicating? It's a level of foolishness that educated people are having that clearly shows Romans chapter so you need to understand when God ceases to have a place in your life. Number one, I've written a book called The Secret of Contentment. Number one, you end up discontented. Nothing gives you contentment. Number two, you tend to become mentally deranged. 
you start thinking and doing things that you are degrees and with what you are doing don't look related. And it's all because you stop giving God the place that belong to him. And so I want to come here and uh, tell you clearly. For this university to set a time to thank God for 10 years, you are not going Romans chapter 1 way. You are going the way of greatness. Where God continues to have a place, not just in the Christian Union, but in, in the University of Nauru, you call it Ivory Tower. I don't know what the tower here is called. In the, in the big offices of Karatina University, they will need to have God in every corner of the campus. But as, as I go towards finishing, I just want to ask you, why should you be thankful? I think there are several reasons I want to, I want to give you. Number one, because, and rather I should start by asking, why are, not people, why are people not thankful? Number one, because of what we call entitlement mentality. Like your husband, I've been married for around 44 years. My wife has always provided food. So if she brings chapati, and I like chapatis, why thank her? That's her work. Because I'm entitled as a husband to have chapatis. Now, you know, the moment you stop being thankful to your wife, it's not the end. It's only the beginning of the end. You need to understand. <laughs> and there's a much difference between the end and the beginning of the end. Many marriages go wrong because you start taking each other for granted. You go to London. You struggle because you don't know the town well. Then you come with a dress for your wife. And if you did so much effort to get that dress. She looks at it and says, thank you. Nothing else. And for the next two years, she never wears the dress. Now, my friend, <laughs> when you remember the amount of effort, will you ever come with another dress? It's not the end. But it is the beginning of the end. When you want any relationship, and the same thing in this campus, where students think lecturers for all granted. He is not aware. My wife is uh, it's a lecturer. You hear? She has been teaching for many years because um, Dr. Modi is not very young. So she has taught for as many years. She was teaching when we got married. And I see her marking. You know, we all have, we all have to give her time to mark. She says, you know, graduation is next week. Now, even the chapati cannot be available. Now, you, know, <laughs> you need to understand the life of a lecturer. But the like, students simply assume, after all, you are paid. So they are not thankful. They even will talk rude to a lecturer, because they are not conscious that there are many people paid a salary, but they play around with their work. Am I right? Yes. So it's not the money that makes them work hard. It's a desire to be perfect, to do good. So when students don't appreciate their lecturers, it all comes from the spirit of entitlement. If I know something that will destroy you, in that spirit of entitlement, where you feel like everything revolves around you. You know, I still remember in Shell interviewing a young man, an accountant. He was very impressed because he was only 22 and he was trying to, to do CPA 3. So I was very impressed at that age. So in the interview, we were interviewing panel. We asked him, how did you manage so quickly? He says, I, I decided not to go for A-level, that's at the time of A-level, and I decided to, I should go to, I don't know, Strathmore, and have been passing my exam. He says, and the money has been paid, yes. Who pays? He says, my brother, my older brother. Not even your father, no, my father is very old. I'm the last one. So who has paid? My older brother. So the, one of the people in the panel asked, do you thank your brother? You know what the young man asked us? What for? <laughs> Even my father paid for him. We looked at the young man and said, Do you know there are many older brothers who never pay for their younger brothers? Do you know them? Some of them are seated here. Now you need to be aware. <laughs> you need to be as, as, to be aware that if your brother paid for you, you should be forever grateful. Am I communicating? Yes. And what what when what make, makes you not grateful? In the spirit of entitlement. When you have a child and you start seeing him develop the spirit of entitlement, work on it early. Because if they truly get that spirit, 
you'll never keep a job. That one lost his job. Am I right? And many people never get promotions. And they, they are academically gifted, but they have no spirit of, they have a spirit of entitlement. But the spirit of entitlement to keep to our thing is what stops you being grateful to God. Because after all, you created me God. Why are you not doing it? And if you have done it, why should I thank you? It's your job. <laughs> you need to ask yourself, am I suffering from the spirit of entitlement? Do you realize that nobody owes you anything in this life, including your mother? I keep telling mothers, it's very interesting. In our time, when our children were getting, were getting um, born, we are not allowed in the maternity wing. These days are here, young fathers are allowed there. But that room where children are born is called a delivery? Do you know why they call it a delivery room? My thinking is it was called a delivery room to remind the mother that child is not her child. She was not used as a delivery system. That is God's child. <laughs> only the mother was used as a delivery system. So the only one who, who and of course, like now my parents are all gone. The reason I'm still okay is because they were only used as a delivery system. God is the result of my life. So anybody who does anything to me, I owe them thanks. Yes. Am I communicating? Yes. Including my wife. How many people have been dropped by their, by, their, by, their husband, by their wives within two years? And mine has been there for 44 years. Now, can you see why I must be thankful? I have no right. Now, the moment you lose entitlement, you will find it very easy to thank people. And as you thank them, your relationships improve. Let me tell you something. If you bring your wife a dress from London, and she is so excited, she thanks you, she keeps wearing, was one of the ways of thanking a give up a thing is for them to see you using it. Am I right? <laughs> now, what happens? Next time you are now in Denmark, you will look for a dress. Am I right? We enjoy being thanked. Now, do you want a good relationship with people? Start thanking them, appreciating them. Do you want a promotion? Thank your boss. And, and he can tell when you are just pretending. <laughs> The issue is not to say thank you, because a lot of people know how to say thank you. There's a difference between being thankful and saying they are not the same. And it's very important to understand that. The second thing that will stop you from, from being thankful is people who are optimists. One of my books, I have read, I've done a character study on King David. I have a book called um, uh, I, I call it leadership style, leadership in David's style. And one of the things I like about David, he was not an optimist. Once he was appointed king, you were expected to become king immediately. For 14 years, he actually never became king. The thing was, I can't remember how, must be more than 14 because he was, around, he was a young boy, we are told. But he actually became king at the age of 30. Now, but in the meanwhile, he did not have the spirit of entitlement. But number two, he was not an optimist. Who are optimists? People expect things to go well. And if you expect things to go well, when they finally go well, there's no excitement. After all, they went well, and you know they would go well. One of the biggest problems we have is the spirit of an optimist. And I know I'm now up against all the positive thinkers. It is foolishness to be an optimist. <laughs> Total foolishness to be an optimist. Because an optimist is a person who assumes things must go well. And because they don't go, because they assume they will go well, they don't prepare for anything going wrong. Those are the people when something goes wrong, they end up in Madare. And all because they never expected it to go badly. They never prepared for it. You find a student who thinks they must get a name. And you have heard in the newspaper, students who got a B plus and committed suicide. Am I right? Because they assumed A is their entitlement. But number two, they were not realists, they were optimists. So an optimist will not become thankful because they are assumed. The second group of people who are equally bad are pessimists. While optimists are people who assume things will go well, must go well. So they don't prepare for anything going bad. The pessimists are worse because they assume everything must go bad. Because they must 
so bad, they can't work. Why waste my time? Mm. All girls refuse me, so why apply? <laughs> so they are 60 and unmarried, not because girls refuse, but they never approach them. Because they feared any girl will say no. And they approach the first one, she said no. Approach another one, said no. They said, I don't know the third one. So you need to understand if you are a pessimist, you have condemned yourself into trouble, a troublesome life. I say in my book, David gives us advice. We must be realists. Not optimists, not pessimists, but let me tell you the difference with a realist. A realist is somebody who will look at an issue like an optimist, then put a comma. Change direction and look at the same issue as a pessimist and know both of them are wrong. So what's likely to happen? He therefore has a realistic view. Once you are realistic, the moment the, the thing happens, you are grateful to God because you know what God did. Because of all the other things you knew could go wrong, you are grateful to God. Are we together? And it's important to understand, if you don't have this, it will create a problem in your ability to be thankful. A realist will always look at an issue and see what can go wrong. Well, all right. Anyway, my pet subject is being proactive. Who is a proactive person? A proactive person is a realist. Because a proactive person is a person who has a dry line. And I tell young people, because I speak with a lot of the young people, I say, don't marry a girl before you have seen her mother. Why? Because that figure eight will be exactly like the mother 20 years old. So, so once you see her, see the mother, if you can't like the mother, please don't propose yet. <laughs> That's how to be a realist. Are we together? Because you see, if you see the mother and you realize, yeah, after a number of babies, it's acceptable. Now I propose. Now, what I'm trying to get you to see is that when you become a realist, you never end up with the traumatic experiences because you are ready for them. But you never give up trying because you also know there's a God in heaven who can make the impossible possible. Are we together? That's how to be a realist. The moment you now say God can make the impossible possible, it gives you a grateful heart with every achievement. Like Prabhu Moshir is after 10 years, 16 years in this place, with all the challenges you went through, he stands and says, people think I'm very grateful, but I remember this incident and that incident and that incident that clearly shows the intervention from heaven. Are we together? Yes. If you want to enjoy your life, what I'm calling a life of contentment, it will be very, very important that that issue is actually sorted out. So, what have we said and I'm summarizing? Number one, when people learn to be thankful, they find it easy to create friends. Because friendships are with the people who appreciate you and you appreciate them. Um, in a relationship you are going to have, thankfulness, appreciation will be important. And it will be important that that is something you are dealing with. And basis of thankfulness, appreciate the truth. There is always something that is failed. There is always something that, for example, a thief comes to your house. I pray he doesn't come. But then let's assume a thief comes to your house and steals many things which he counts important, but he leaves out what is important to you. So if you think of what to thank the think about, there are many things he did wrong, but you are grateful he left you with your car keys. Am I communicating? Now, there is nobody you can miss something to thank for. A lot of people are seated here, bitter with their parents, because of what the parents did wrong. But that is because you are a pessimist. If you start thinking about all oh, your parents, did, oh, yes, and like your father was such a, a terrorist, but I agree, he was a terrorist. But just look at many people who never saw their father. I'm not communicating. But they, and they are keeping, uh, keeping checking who was really my father. You, you know him. Okay, a terrorist, but you knew him. And you start saying, God, at least I know who my father was. There's always
always some, you can be grateful, even for a bad act. Like you fail your exams, let me say, at least I'm able to repeat. There are many people who failed and cannot repeat. There's always something. So please look for it. It's there. Okay, your wife normally makes bad ugali, similar to soil, but at least she makes good chapatis. <laughs> at least she makes good chapatis. So why concentrate on the ugali? You don't need ugali every day. Why don't you concentrate on the chapatis? Find something to be grateful about. And that will suddenly going to help you to grow your friendships and your relationship. And I think very important. If you choose not to listen to me and I'm finishing, <laughs> you will become socially unacceptable. And gratefulness has a terrible effect on our social lives. And it will mean that because of that, you are going to end up a person who will be difficult to live with. Whether you are talking about you and your children, or you and your parents, or you and your spouse, or you and your siblings, the moment you fail to look for reason to thank them, as people as they are, you end up creating problems. Not for them, but for yourself. So loneliness is a disease. And it's a fast disease on earth. When Adam was created, and he was happily in the garden, God said, it is not good. What was the sickness? Being alone. So you need to understand that when you don't have this idea about thankfulness, you condemn yourself to loneliness. Because people do not want to spend time with you because you, are, you don't know how to deal with them. You know, number two, ungratefulness has terrible effect on your spiritual life. Because ungratefulness is an idea of not seeing the hand of God. And so you end up being spiritually unbalanced, spiritually having no relationship with God. All because of that. And of course, you will be deplored by God. And that will be something that you need to deal with. So I finish by summarizing what I've said. Number one, find a reason in every achievement where God comes in. Number two, understand that the truth of the matter is every one of us are who we are because of God. None of us is self-made. God played a role. Number three, that because God does not most times appear personally, he always uses others for our achievement, whatever our achievement is. And so you owe them thankfulness, isn't it? And my last point, that if you choose the way of ungratefulness, you choose the way of loneliness, and finally, hell. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's give another round of applause. I know kuna wengine wameshika pale kwa check the mother. Kuna wengine wako hapo. Amen. But the one I picked is being a realist. Not optimist, not pessimist, being a realist. Find a place where God come, comes in. Anything that happens. Hata hiyo kiti au kuanguka ulika. Find where God comes in. And as a university, we want to appreciate that God has kept us. So we want to take a few minutes, very few minutes, to thank God in prayer. That's what we, we called it to do. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to ask us, and we're going to do it this way. We will all stand. Then we will take one or two minutes individually to look for a reason why you can thank God for Karatina University. One reason. You will thank God individually for that one minute. Then our brother John will make a prayer for us as we thank God for the 10 years. Is that good? Yes. yes, then from there we are moving. As you can see, something is happening, which some of you have already started thanking God for. <laughs> All right? 
So can I ask us to stand, please? You may have heard all bad things. You may have missed a promotion here and there. You may have thought this would have happened. But we want to focus on one thing that you want to thank God for, for today. So I want us to do it. We take a moment, just that one minute, to thank God for. You can do it quietly in your heart, but find a reason that you can thank God for. And then our brother will join us as we give thanks to God. Let's go ahead and just thank God. Asante Yesu, 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 Asante Yesu. Asante Yesu, Asante Yesu. Lord, we have listened to the story of this campus. The idea from the locals, the idea from the university, uh, more university, the very idea of this coming in. The people that were involved, may, some of them may not be here even. But we thank you that you put the idea in their mind for this university to start. But even more important, the Lord, thank you for sending Prince Mojiri to come here because he was the right man at the right hour and you knew it. And you helped him to go through the difficulties, a few of which he mentioned, that have helped the university to reach where it is. We thank you because that was your choice. We also want to thank you for every student who came and worked hard and graduated. And they are now serving the nation or nations outside Kenya because of the training they got here. We want to thank you for every one of them. We want to thank you for the workers, both academic and non-academic, who have worked here to make this university what it is. And we want to thank you. We thank you for the two councils, the founding one and the current one. Lord, we thank you for the time they take to be the think tank for this university and to approve ideas that take the university forward. We thank you for one of them. We also especially want to thank you for the testimony that they have not been corrupt, that they have had integrity. Lord, we thank you for them. And we pray even for the future councils that they will be people of integrity for the good of this university. But we also want to thank you for the government of Kenya. Where the two, the two uh, buildings uh, where the professor has to keep going between the treasury or education, you have put people who have the interest of Karatina at heart. And so after a lot of persuasion, they finally have released some money that helped this campus to be where it is. We want to thank you for every one of them. Lord, the number of thanks are many, the items are many, but you know it from our hearts. We have taken, each one of us has taken time to thank you and you know what we are thanking you about. Lord, we want to thank you. But secondly, we want to pray for the future of this campus. The foundation that has been laid, the good foundation that has been laid, we pray that it will not go to waste. That you will give a new leadership that honors you. A good leadership that is sacrificial. A good leadership that is hardworking for the future of this campus. And I pray that you give them ideas that will make a difference in this nation that Karatina will be the foundation ground for big changes that will happen to this country because of the kind of research innovation that you come up with. Lord, may the future of this campus be something this nation will be proud of. We will be proud because you have helped Karatina to achieve greatness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can take our seats. We appreciate Asante Sana.
We're coming to an end. In a few minutes, we'll be ending. Uh, we also want to just stretch a hand of gratitude. We want to, on behalf of a few people, what we have done as a committee, which I would also want to recognize. Uh, maybe the members of the committee can stand, because when we finish up, we'll just go. The chairman, Professor uh, Kinyanjui, the members, Lucy, uh, Agnes, Dr. Gidaiga, uh, Dr. Gadudi, Elizabeth, by the way, Brenda, the other, she tells me it's only the mother who calls her Elizabeth, and uh, the AFO, and Anne, that's a committee that worked to bring this. You may want to appreciate it. May I be being thankful? Yeah. So we want to really thank you. They have thought of a few things that we are putting together, and courtesy of council and courtesy of management, each one of us will have a small gift to remember this day. It may not be given to you today because of time and logistics. So what we will do is that please know that you will sign up for something at HR to remember this day. All right? If you are not entitled, you will get become a coffee. <laughs> Thank God. I'm also told there's MD Mawasco. Are you there? Just stand. We let's appreciate him. Thank you. There are also representatives from several of our banks. You are not. Please stand if you're representing a bank. Some of our stakeholders. Thank you very much. Let's appreciate them. Sorry that we have not noted that before. So I want to ask uh, Elizabeth. To pick it up, I'm a pastor, so now I have to call her baptism on name. <laughs> she will pick up the parts, just a few awards to say thank you for on behalf of the staff, on behalf of the leadership. It will take a very short while, then we'll be through with that. I'm also reminded somebody has just called me from far out of the country and said, how can they get the books that Nganga is talking about, John Nganga? And so I want to answer maybe some of you who may want to to get, please see some of us or talk to any of the focus, but because we are linked, if you talk to us, we can get you the books, okay? Yeah, this is somebody. And again, and I want her to see, she, the person has actually said that I'm looking smart. That's it, Mimi? Yeah. That's an honor. Let's appreciate. Yeah, it is written, Oga O Dr. Pomond. <laughs> yeah, and he says he's looking smart. Thank you very much for that message. And uh, this is the opportunity to appreciate. And like indicated, we will just have a few representatives. And whatever you get, you appreciate. It is simply to acknowledge that you have been part of these 10 years. Your contribution has taken us this far. Council members, th through the chair, thank you very much for remembering to acknowledge that we have done it. We sincerely appreciate for that um, thought. Um, I'm going to be a little bit fast because we are all looking forward to something great. Um, I begin with the student leaders and a representative of the student leaders. I will call one lady and one gentleman. They are our main clients. They are for the chairman and the vice chair. In that uh, order, please come over. And I will ask the former member of parliament, now that they are leaders, please come and present them with what we thought. It's something in memory of Mr. Weru. Please come over. Chairman, please come over. The Vice Chair. We will walk a little bit faster. <laughs> Chairman, you can show what you got. None of us is going to get money. You know he said something small and he did this, indicated it was money. It's not money. It is what we are calling memorabilia. 
Totally great that you can keep somewhere and remember Karatina University. Thank you very much, Chairman and Vice Chair. The second group is a very important group. And don't ask question why these ones. It's simply a coincidence. A coincidence that they are moving into a new endeavor at the time when Karatina University has attained 10 years since Cheta. We know there are others who may have left for one reason or the other, but this particular one will be exiting this particular era and uh, for a good reason. I will ask Engineer Opio, who is the Chair of Finance and um, Human Resource on behalf of Council to recognize a representative, Professor Madenge, the founding school of agriculture, dean, and also among the very first few. I'm sure the PF number is below 10. Thank you very much, <laughs> Professor Madenge. That is to acknowledge the work that you have done, and you are representing. We had four of them, but we will just call to. We have the second one, and this is um, Lady. Sorry, the lady was not able to come. Mr. Musambi, Security Officer. Thank you very much for your service. We have been so support. Anytime we had anything, Musambi came in. It didn't matter what time of the day. Our sincere appreciation, very beautiful. Disciplined force. Thank you very much. Those two are just representative. We have four others. They will get theirs later. The next group is a group of staff members, and by coincidence, mentioned here, and they have given a lot of good work. Nikisema Nikoelia Mnajua Ninani. Nico area. Mr. Washira, where are you? Anytime you look for Mr. Washira and the same and Nico area, ready to serve you whether over the weekend or not. Are you Nico area there? Nilimwona na Nikoeko, so as Washira comes, I'm looking for the next one, that is Jane Wango. Jane Wango. Please come over. Very dedicated members of staff. This will be presented by council member and uh, chair of the academic committee, Ms. Dr. Nambuki, you can step in. Kabibu. Washira, please come. I've seen you. I've seen you. Thank you. You can see he was working. He was attending to something. Karibu Washira. And congratulations. You are always there. Thank you very much. We sincerely appreciate you. He represents those staff members. Um, Jane is not around. She was. But she could be attending to something else. And then we will also appreciate somebody else. First um, founding dean, Professor Mwarudia, to represent all the deans. Founding team, Dr. Namuki, you also present that. Followed by Helen Kwarobo. Helen Kwarobo, randomly picked, represents the members of academic staff. You've been here. You've been committed. It is a surprise, they didn't know. You can see they're even putting their hands for you like that. Clap for Helen. Thank you very much, Helen.
Council member, uh, Mr. Felix Okach, you will present to the next group. And um, we want to recognize the founding registrar. The registrar. Asante Sana, I came in when he was just exiting. Thank you for the mentorship for the few days. We have been able to do a good job because of you. Thank you very much. Something you can keep and remember. Thank you. Um, you will not go because I will request. Today I have the power, sir. Okay. <laughs> to someone almost. Even very senior people, you know I never give them instructions, but today yeah. I will ask all the council members to come in front, minus the chair. All council members, please. Thank you very much. They did not recognize themselves. They can't even thought that it is also good that we recognize them. They go with something that they can show, put on their tables. When we come visiting by accident, we hope to see this important item on the table. I'm trying to remember who was to give this. You know, it's a difficult one. Please excuse me. VC, that's why I'm forgetting. <laughs> Kindly. You know he has always been giving me instructions to this. Now I'm wondering how to ask him to appreciate the council members kindly. I'm told you have to shake each one of their hands and give them. Thank you. That's Mr. Felix. Dr. Uluoli. Thank you very much. Dr. Dambuke. Much appreciated. Ms. Susan Gitonga, Asante Sana. Engineer, is it Philip Opio Okeo? David, sorry, David Asante Sana. CPA, Pauline Gwande, Asante Sana. And uh, Mr. Moremi. Oh yeah, we, we, we don't, Mr. Ngeshe was not able to come, but we also appreciate the service that he has given. VC, you have done the job, but today I have the instructions to ask you to also come back. <laughs> BBC, yes sir, today I'm asking you to come here. <laughs> Please come over. <laughs> DBC PFA, Moduri Getonga, please. I can call you that. And also Professor Nyawera, Asante. This time the chairman will jog a bit and come and appreciate these people. You see the powers I have today? <laughs> the chairman will acknowledge. I'm being warned that you know when somebody is this, you know what it means. But Professor DBC, PFA, don't write that letter. So please pass them over to the chairman. Here. To the VC. <laughs> Your PA is giving you orders today, Asante. DBC PFA, Asante Sanda, much appreciated. Chairman, DBC PFA will remain there 
and also hand this over to the chairman. Yes. <laughs> we must learn to appreciate each other. So, Asante Sana Much appreciated. Asante. For the rest of us, we will get. It is there. It is, I'm told it is known as a memorabilia. So if it doesn't come, and that will be through the registrar PNA, he will ensure as long as you have a PF number, you get your memorabilia. Asante Sana. DC, we will call you back, Pole. And we say the person who has reminded us to be grateful at all times. We take a lot of things for granted. The person who was sent by God to us today, the preacher of the day, kindly come and receive something in acknowledgement as you take the chapati in the evening. Tell them they remember that you did a good job. Asante. Dr. Omoni, I have to hand this back to you. This was your day, Mr. Oga. <laughs> Thank you very much. Somebody says that when he went to Nigeria, he wondered why those people, Kwani Awaogi, everybody just named old Oga. Oga. Okay, we want to appreciate. Let's give thanks to God for all those people. We thought that we would have at least a cake to celebrate this day. Uh, I am told that ladies have something about cakes, that even if you go for a wedding, you don't leave until you cut a cake. And the cake here, Lucy has a certain taste that the others don't have. The cake here, So we want to do that. And we also notice, if you notice, there are a lot of things that we are doing representing schools. There was a prayer by School of, uh, of, of Education. They handled that. There was a bit of uh, something else that happened through another school. The chair was another school. But the School of Business now will help us to toss what will be a shara. So I'm looking for Dr. Kiyumbe. Please come. There's somebody called Moniu, that time, and they dressed in a business way. So those ones stand next to the cake there, all right? All right, the School of Agriculture also is presented, the HOD for Nutrition, please come. You are representing. Sheila has a bit of a problem with Mugu Pali. So who are you and upside here? Okay. And Dr. Mbaka, please come. Okay? And there is a cake there. Please continue there. The only thing I want to caution you is that these people are a bit hungry now. Uziyanza story, hai keki metengenezo na mayai. Sawa sawa. Sini mewasa idea. All right, we have come to a very important moment. We are celebrating a lot of efforts put in by many of us. The management of the university, previous councils and the current council. I'm feeling humbled to call the chair of the council and the vice chancellor. They're the ones who are going to cut the cake. I'm very humbled. I thought Dr. Mbondi should have done that. <laughs> so, Chair of the Council and the Vice Chancellor, we request you to come and cut this cake. Okay, we, we are going to request the DBC Arsa also to accompany them. 
and the DBC, PF and A, and uh, a few other ladies, the registrar, Dr. Dambuki from the council, and uh, Mrs. Getonga also from the council. So I guess so that we are able to take the photos, I request you to come to this side. We are celebrating efforts by lots and lots of people. A few of them are represented in this team. And uh, I'll request our, the lady who did the cake to hand over the knife to the team. It's a small knife. So we need to get close together. Okay, photographers, kindly capture the, the picture of the cake so that it can be in record. For those that are outgoing, those that are outgoing, they are giving thanks. And I guess all of us could tell them that well done. Well done. Good and faithful servant. They have served well, and of course, for those that are going on, we pray that they continue to serve well. Please continue cutting until we have enough pieces for the membership represented here. Continue cutting until we have sizable pieces and enough for all that are here. The, the dosas. Once the pieces are cut and they are enough. So we have enough pieces for everyone. The PC, the chair, the TPCs, and the two additional members. Dr. Kiyombe here and Dr. Muniyo to do the dosing. Ladies and gentlemen, we are requesting that we count up to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine,
to test, to toast, sorry. BC and the chair, kindly toast.
DVC and the DVCs please remain. The rest, management, please come up. Grace, watch a cake, you can pick up. Looking for 